Before we start off, um, it's with a sad heart that I acknowledge the passing of Camille Anthony, a former member of this board and all around great person. I've asked Ben to FOIA, <coughs> colleague and friend of Camille's for many years, to say a few words to honor her, after which I'd like to have a moment of silence. Ben. Thank you, Welcome. Chair, members of the board. It's an honor and privilege for me to say a few words about my friend and colleague, Camille Anthony. Camille exemplified service to the community. As we look back across the 375 years of the town of Reading, we will see few records such as this. Camille served 20 years as a town meeting member, 12 years as a member of the Conservation Commission, and 18 years as a member of this board. Ponder that for a moment, what sort of commitment it took on her part and that of her family to fulfill this commitment to the town. Megan introduced Camille um, when she won the Citizen of the Year Award from the Chamber in 2015 and used these words to describe her <laughs> work. Community, wisdom, passion for making a difference, voice of reason, gracious chair, determination, and patience. It goes, as you know, beyond just showing up on Tuesday nights. Her tenure in town government yielded long-lasting significant initiatives including development of the town dump to what we know now as Walker's Brook Drive, the downtown development project, conversion of Reading's water supply to the MWRA, development of the former Edison Wesley property, uh, and work on the uh, rather aggressive I-95, I-93 <laughs> interchange proposal for which she spent two years going to um, community uh, commission meetings. Even after her retirement from the board, she was still active uh, in helping the town through work for, with the Economic Development Committee and Human Rights Advisory Committee. Two things stand out for me during our time working together. One, Camille spoke to everyone. If there was a problem that needed fixing, people would let Camille know and she'd work with the town manager or the board to get a project underway or the issue resolved. She was a big believer of getting the board into the field to look at problems and hear people's voices. Second, some issues she never let go of. Hand to the Lord. <laughs> to this day, whenever someone anywhere talks about speed enforcement, I still hear Camille's voice talking to then Chief Cormier about what we were doing to increase traffic enforcement in Reading, meaning citations. Um, but it wasn't only the visible civic life um, that was Camille. She was great at bringing people together at the human level. It's the dinner for fellow board members, town manager, and the assistant town manager and their spouses just because. The cooking show that she did with her friend Jean that everyone wanted to be on. And volunteering for a number of years to run the big auction fundraiser for the Unitarian Universalist Church. And spending a few years singing with the Reading Community sing Singers. I'll miss her walking the dog up our street, which was a time to chat. Camille made a difference, like few before in the life of this town, and I deeply appreciate the opportunity to share their remembrance. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. And now um, for a brief moment of silence uh, in honor of, of Camille. Thank you. <coughs> and thank you once again, Ben. Um, so this evening, we will start with the board, select board reports um, and the town manager reports as reflected in the agenda, followed by public comment, general public comment. Um, unless one of us has a topic that's been not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting, we will move on to a discussion of, uh, of the items listed that are listed in the agenda. agenda. These include, uh, we're starting off with approval of minutes. As we discussed at the last meeting, we're here to appoint town accountant 
discuss a change in ownership at Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. Um, then we're going to have three public hearings. One to reduce the speed limit along Haverhill Street. The second one to amend select board policies. And the third one to set water, stormwater sewer rates. Um, prior to the last uh, hearing, which is on setting uh, water, stormwater sewer rates, um, we're going to have a discussion to uh, about the option of having a second second water meter, um, which Barry Barry will lead. Um, and then finally, um, I'm pleased to say that we will be appointing some members to the ad hoc committee <coughs> on human rights, and that will be led by um, Barry and Vanessa. So without further ado, uh, let's move on to liaison reports. And um, I think we start with Dan this time. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Ben, before you go, <laughs> I just wanted to thank you uh, for your eloquent words. Uh, you, you were in at the end of uh, Camille's uh, terms. I, I was in at the very beginning in 1994. She was a wonderful person. Uh, it was back in the era when uh, nobody knew when anybody's politics were outside of the town, and, and I, I, I hope we get back to that someday. But she was just an awesome person here for the town in so many ways, and uh, she'll be missed dearly. But thank you for your words. And uh, in addition, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm pleased to announce that we're about to kick off the final subcommittee. They're working me like a dog this morning. <laughs> yeah. you know, this is, yes, we're this is get as much out of you as possible. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm willing to do it. Uh, this is the subcommittee to set up a process for the annual setting of town, meeting, town manager goals with a timetable mm -hmm. and also to look at uh, the current review form and process and uh, maybe put some structure around that and look at a different type of form. We'll be meeting Thursday evening. I've already sent a dra some draft ideas mm -hmm. to yep, you, Andrew, and to Bob. Yep. Uh, so we'll kick those around then. Excellent. And I, I anticipate we'll be able to wrap this up uh, next Wednesday in another subcommittee meeting and bring our preliminary findings to the board on the 26th. Uh, so what we won't have the opportunity to have a public hearing this month, but when you folks are ready with section 14, at whatever point in the future, you can bring that <coughs> this new material, sure. which will be part of 1-3. Uh, so we'll come in that to your care afterwards. That's all I have. Thanks, Dan. Barry? Um, thank you. Um, I also wanted to say a couple, just one really quick thing about Camille. It's, Camille Anthony is probably the number one reason why I'm actually sitting in this chair right now. She was um, relentless in encouraging me to run. Um, and uh, encouragement in the kind of the Don Corleone kind of way, which is oh. you need to run, you need to run. And finally when the seat came open, I, she was the first person that I called. So um, she was compassionate and she was generous with her time and her advice and her friendship um, and her loyalty. So um, I thank her as well. So um, does everybody know where they were six years ago today? Okay. She's probably running for election. <laughs> we hired our new town manager, Bob. Ah, for six that's right. Oh, no. so only um, six years. I know it seems like six. Years, so, um, so just wanted to let everybody, everybody know that. And, yeah, and um, now trying a new contract. We, you know, we hope you don't like. <laughs> so, a um, couple of things really quickly. Um, at the last, um, right after our last meeting, um, we had uh, the ZBA actually formally voted um, the Eaton Lakeview project. Um, we are now officially, when those projects get built, at our 10% affordable housing mandate. Um, I think this whole town, the staff deserve, and this board deserve a huge round of applause because we're one of the few towns that have actually met that mandate. And what that means for us is that, you know, for the next few years till the census gets done, um, we can control the pace and the depth of our own development instead of having to respond to what other people think are appropriate for writing. We can figure it out ourselves. So with that project, um, we're in good stead. Um, can I ask you a question about that? Sure. Uh, when is the safe harbor period actually up? I thought it was pretty soon. It's actually, it's really up, but now that we've gotten this project approved, we yep. can now apply for another safe harbor oh, sort of a, a, okay. with belts and suspenders. The all state right. has to actually certify all, all of that, mm -hmm. but, you know, we, we've now gone well above and beyond all that. Got so, um, 
you know, until we do the new census, which is by the time 2023, so maybe we have three, four years to kind of take a breath. And if yeah. someone wants to come in with a 40B, we can say, you're welcome, but you're not doing 100 units, you're doing 20. <laughs> so um, that's a great, you know, it's a great thing for us that we can concentrate our efforts elsewhere. Um, on to sort of somewhat uh, a similar topic. Um, tomorrow night is the Wakefield ZBA, which is now taking up, it's been delayed quite a bit as the developer um, uh, has kind of gone back to, to the drawing board. Um, and they're ready to present, um, to present new plans tomorrow uh, at the ZBA. And, and, and I know there's a lot of people in Reading that are interested in that, especially the people at Summit Towers and Gazebo. Um, but they are moving forward. Um, and basically what they've done, where they're gonna present, I don't, there's no renderings yet, but they're gonna go from five stories to four in the two buildings at F Front Hopkins Street. Um, there's also gonna be a transition one-story clubhouse in front of the building, on um, building one which they're proposing. Um, and the new plans call for a reduction of 15 units. So just to remind everybody, that was 190. And now they're proposing 175. So that's gonna be presented to the ZBA. I'm sure they will have, um, they'll have something to say about that, but um, that's tomorrow. Um, also, um, the uh, CBTC has met, and um, they're, they're working on some uh, design guidelines, which I think is really important, design guidelines in the 40R district. Um, remember, that's where, Basically, a lion's share of our downtown development are going to occur, and so um, essentially, what they're looking at um, are sort of how you know, sort of master guidelines, you know, design guidelines for that district, and sort of how to protect residential users and manage parking <coughs> for new developments. Um, they're also discussing sort of a transitional area, Both that part of the 40R that kind of is at the edges and on the border that might have sort of single family houses or two family houses around there to make sure that that development is more in scale and less dense than it is maybe sort of toward the middle. Um, they're looking at some uh, on-site parking uh, plan for residential units and off-site parking for the commercial employee customer because remember there's going to be some some retail there as well um and um you know just trying to find a balance between protecting residential structures um uh, within the neighborhood without overly restricting development so that's kind of what they're working on i know that there's a lot of interest in that especially this high density um uh, development going on in that in that small area so cptc is, is working on that and they're just kind of plowing through and creating language on that um, and then the last thing I wanted to just sort of comment on, I had mentioned this, um, I guess, in an earlier liaison report that um, uh, resident Teresa, Teresa Wiggins, who um, runs um, Village Parenting, is running these free workshops to help uh, parents talk about inclusion with their children. And there are three this week that are coming up. Um, one is tomorrow, I'm so, uh, uh, I think at the library, Thursday at the high school, and, and, thir and uh, Tuesday the 19th at Killam. Those people who are interested to go, to go uh, uh, look at Village Parenting uh, on Facebook or our website and get the, the dates and times, but that's a really great resource, especially as we're dealing with some of the issues here in town. Um, it's gonna really help parents talk to their kids who basically from young kids to even high school kids about how um, how to basically talk about these issues um, uh, about inclusion and about and about hate, you know hate and all that. So um, really, a shout out to her. She's doing this free of charge, and it's a great resource to the town. So that's all I have. John, um, I actually have uh, quite a number of liaison reports that'll be in my next meeting because I got a bunch of meetings coming up. Yeah. However, there was one thing that. Uh, I think I'd just like to raise it here. It's not on our agenda, but you know, it it kind of struck me that we have heard now from three of our um, rather long-term convenience stores <coughs> relative to some 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 interest. Um, they realize that at the moment we don't have a beer and wine license for them. However, they also realize that um, every single town that surrounds us does let their convenience stores, you know, compete in that arena. And they have asked for us to give some consideration. I think that, uh, I don't know where that's gonna go, but I think it's a long and winding road, I think, isn't it, Bob, as far as? Uh, and during my report, I actually have a PowerPoint to answer oh, your question. Oh, okay, uh, good, so uh, great, I'm glad. Through it, but. I, I just, um, I thought since we've all, you know, kind of heard over the course of the last two weeks, 
um, from several long-standing businesses. We need to pay attention to them and see what we can do in that regard. Um, the other thing I would like to say, um, and I'm, I'm glad we had the opportunity to have a moment to reflect on Camille Anthony's work here in town. It has been legendary, and that's the truth. Um, ben pointed that out. I can tell you that um, I was a regular customer here for 10 years before I became a selectman, um, doing a lot of work on, especially with youth groups and recre recreational. And I, the one thing I was always struck with, with Camille Anthony is, she had that same wonderful smile when she said yes <laughs> or no. Uh, and I actually really enjoyed that about her. Um, and I can recall um, as I was, um, as I was getting ready to be seated as a selectman, I happened to have run into her at breakfast at Christopher's, which was a place I would run into her from time to time. And she said, well, finally, you've made it official. Took you long enough. I mean, so I, I do have to say that um, I have a lot of respect for people that make those kinds of commitments over that period of time. And I think it's something that's really important to reflect on. Um, she wasn't urging me, Barry. <laughs> I can tell you that, but, uh, but I think that um, she appreciated the fact that um, different opinions come together and that's what makes our town something special. So I just want to say goodbye and good luck to Camille Anthony, who I think did wonderful things for this town. Vanessa. Um, so I also... Um, I knew Camille, she was one of the people that encouraged me to run. Um, Surrounded by encouragement. Yep. Yep. Um, Camille lives on. And uh, I, I had a very deep and profound respect for her opinion um, on town issues, so she will be missed. Um, for liaison reports, um, the Recreation Committee uh, survey for Birch Meadow came in. The big takeaways there are that there is a desire for walking paths. Uh, bathrooms um, and they've also expressed an interest in a Sunday an earlier start time on Sundays right now the select board policy is that it um, play on town fields begins <coughs> at noon uh, however communities that our teams also play and start earlier in the day um, so similar to your comment John about possibly bringing this up for further discussion this might be something we can put on a future agenda um, to discuss a little bit more in detail <coughs> Um, we have a vacancy for the custodian of soldier and sailor graves. My understanding is that there's someone who was interested in this, but Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, that we've had a hard time <coughs> confirming. Yep. Yeah, I've had some discussions with Bill about this. Yeah, yeah I, so. yeah, so. Um, Gotta get him in here. <laughs> if, if, if the gentleman is watching, please do come in. We would very much love to, to appoint you. Um, if there's someone else that is interested, please do let us know. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, well, I, I too now have to feel I need to say a, a, a little a story about um, Camille. She, she loved to laugh, and and um, she was enthusiastic. And um, the, the the first thing I remember m most vividly in my mind about Camille is when I decided to run. Uh, for the select board, um, you have to understand I'm also a state worker. And she very publicly came charging at me, waving a check to a state employee, which is, you know, all kinds of bad for a number of reasons. So I said, don't give me the check, for, you know, Camille. And um, she had, we had a good laugh over that. <coughs> But um, no, she was truly a great person. And uh, I, uh, I'd like to echo John's statement. We got some um, requests about the convenience stores. I forward that along to Bob, and, and, and I look forward to his presentation on that tonight. Uh, I'm the liaison to Reading 375, that is, uh, the very large committee of volunteers that are working hard to make sure we have a great celebration of our 375th 
anniversary here in Reading. And um, so I'd like to give some updates to keep uh, that effort in the public eye. They report that they have an, had an extremely successful trivia night fundraiser on Friday, and they'd like to thank everyone who came out in support. They'd also like to uh, ask you to please consider supporting Reading 375 <coughs> by buying an anniversary pin for $3.75 that are available at RCT TV Studios, <coughs> Whitland Books, and the Reading Co-op. They also have 375 t-shirts, uh, which are available for $20 at Reading Shirt and Trophy and RCT TV Studios. Um, I, they would like me to encourage you, and I encourage you to go like them on Facebook and stay up to date on what's being planned. And um, that anyone who would like to see all of the events that are going to be going on, and there are a lot of them during this two two week celebration, is that is to go to just Reading375.com, and all the events will be up there. Um, so I encourage you to all all do that. <coughs> Lastly, Bob reminded me uh, that I need to nominate someone to represent the board to update town meeting on the RMLD instructional motion that we received. Um, Dan will no longer be available at that time as he is not running for re-election. And so um, I nominate uh, Vanessa Alvarado to represent the board on this matter. I do so because I think she's the obvi obvious choice. She's our other co-liaison to RMLD and um, is Dan's uh, it comes with Dan's recommendation for the task. So I just want to make sure that this is consistent with the will of the board. Fine. Sure. Yep. Do you need a motion? No. Uh, I, I don't think so. Okay, okay. Think thank so. you. Nodding of heads is enough. Yeah. Nodding of heads is fine. So, Bob. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll just stick to the one issue, and it's um, for some of you it'll be memory lane, for some of you it'll be new. Uh, it's uh, Oh, yes. Nothing like Reading. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so we had a special town meeting. We actually had two special town meetings within the November town meeting just uh, two and a half years ago. And one of them is because basically we had no idea what we were doing with alcohol licenses and every had determined that as the select board policy on licenses were being reviewed. <coughs> so we learned some things. In 1970, uh, the town had voted against question A and there was some background on that. Um, but the secretary did not put it on the ballot a third time, which was required by law. Uh, there is uh, evidence the town did some more work, but again, there's no evidence that the state followed up, so that we effectively had illegal uh, alcohol licenses for 30 or 40 years, te technically. Hmm. Um, and we thought maybe we need to fix this and protect the businesses that had them. So Reading is very unique in the Commonwealth. We have liquor licenses that were accomplished in a very different way than anyone else. So the answer to can we do beer and wine licenses is actually complicated. Um, this question was most recently put in front of town meeting uh, not long ago in 2005, 13, 14 years ago, when a beer and wine lost. But just to advise you, the process to go uh, to allow uh, beer and wine sales is going to require a vote of this board. It's going to require a vote of town meeting. It's going to require a home rule petition through the legislature and then a vote on the ballot at a local election. So for instance, if our objective is next April, it's time to start <coughs> next month. So that's, that's the long and short of that answer and why it's so complicated. Thanks, Bob. That's Thank pretty, you. pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah. So timely this is now. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I, yes. As a point of clarification, yeah. what are the next steps that it should we, as a board, choose to move forward with this? Do we add it to our agenda, talk about it at a future meeting? So, what are next steps? Um, you certainly need to have a discussion at the board level whether you want to have a public heating, um, uh, public hearing, and formally advertise. I'm not sure whether you need to do that yet. You will eventually. It really, you need to first kind of 
suss out the feelings of the board. If the board is unanimous or strongly in one direction, that's indication. If you're not, you need to have more conversation until you get there. Um, at some point, uh, probably late spring, early summer, you're going to, you know, involve town council, probably hopefully every, uh, and uh, go through a formal process at the board level before going through the rest. Um, we've been two different paths with other home rule petitions. Sometimes you go to town meeting first, sometimes you go second. I'm not sure in this one what's the best case. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're aiming for April of next year, um, a home rule petition generally works better in late fall than in early spring because the legislature just uh, goes to recess. So whether they would do it at the same time as November town meeting or just before, it's really hard to know. When we did this in November, um, we did a special in early November and the legislator got it right after that and they, they, they knew about it in advance and yeah, they passed they moved it. it right through. But um, home rule petitions submitted in November need a lot of preparatory work because that's not the best time to submit something, usually September is. <coughs> um, so I would suggest a, a future agenda item where the board members just have a conversation what their feelings are. Mm -hmm. and depending on how strongly the board feels in one direction, we can determine how to go. I, I think that sounds good. Barry? Just a quick question. So that process would be the same regardless of whether we did things right in 1970 or not? So this is not... No, what about much different? If so this is a result of something that 40 years ago we didn't do yes, something Yes, and, and when we found the, the problem, we could have chosen a six-year solution to it that would have been a more normal solution that other towns would have used. But our feeling for the you know for holders of the licenses, that was a huge business risk be holding an illegal license for effectively five or six years. Yep. If their insurance companies ever found out anything ever happened, it was not a good risk. So we chose the fast solution, which did complicate any future action. So that means going forward, we're always we're gonna always going to have, gonna have this. Petition to we want to change right. by increase. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to have an opportunity to uh, discuss this at the end of the meeting when we discuss our next agenda. Um, good. Okay, <coughs> so now to the public comment part of the meeting. Um, if you'd like to speak, please state your name and address. Please direct your comments to the chair. Um, as a reminder, please keep your comments to items that fall under this board's authority. Campaign related comments of any kind will not be allowed. Um, I'd like to get a feel for how many people would like to speak in public comment so I know whether to uh, limit the time or not. So, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you gotta, what, you wanna ask if this is about a uh, hearing, one of the hearings tonight? Yeah, is yeah. if, the, we're gonna, during the hearings uh, of Haverhill Street, select board policies, and uh, the water and sewer rates, you'll have the opportunity to speak on those then. So, then. So, this is an opportunity to speak to the board about other issues. So, a quick show of hands on how many people have something to say now. Two. Okay, okay. Uh, Bill, you had your hand up first. Yeah. Uh, on Vanessa and uh, Dan's remarks about the special in sale of graves, uh, they must be a veteran and they must be a resident of Ray. And I will assure you, the markers will get up whether we have one or not. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy. Uh, Nancy Dr. Bill Street. I actually wanted to comment on the request uh, that was made in your package to grant liquor licenses mm -hmm. to convenience stores and gas stations. Um, folks don't actually stock their liquor cabinets from these places. So the sales are, are uh, very specific, and data shows that um, overwhelmingly they're single beers. They're also called road sodas. Um, the third highest selling item in convenience stores after tobacco and fast food, uh, according to research, is beer. Um, in tonight's package, you had a very interesting letter from the National Civic League that implored you to uh, focus on your residents' health. Um, the first paragraph, they cited that 70% of personal health is due to behavior and environment, not genetics. 
A number of studies have found that in and near neighborhoods where there's a high density of places that sell alcohol, there's a higher rate of violence. Even when levels of poverty, age, and ethnic background of the residents are taken into account, a high density of outlets is strongly related to violence regardless of the neighbors or neighborhood, ethnic, uh, makeup, age, or economic status. The density of alcohol, uh, alcoholic outlets have also been found to be related to, obviously, other alcohol-related problems such as drinking and driving, higher rates of motor vehicle related pest, uh, pedestrian injuries, child abuse, and neglect. I completely understand why these um, stores are looking to expand their sales base, but I'm asking you at what cost to public safety and to public health? And I will be very curious to see how Rakasa weighs in on this and Deputy Chief Clark. The second um, Part of my comment is just a follow up on a question I had last select board meeting. If you could please clarify if Deputy Clark's, uh, Deputy Chief Clark's salary was adjusted when you took over as the chief. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, any other comments? Okay, seeing none, we will. Um, jump into the minutes of the uh, the last that, that are in your packet for February 13th. It was the joint meeting with the school committee, as all of you recall. Um, let's start with Dan. Do uh, you have any comments on the minutes? Yeah, I actually uh, came into that meeting late. Did the meeting start at 6? Mm -hmm. I came in about 6.30, so the minutes should probably just note that. It was somewhere in the middle of the uh, second candidate's comments. Yeah. Uh, the, the lady that was applying. Yeah, Jean, I think her name was. Yeah. Thanks. Put, put them anywhere you want. Yeah. Mr. Engineer came in. That's all I have. Barry. No, I'm good. John. I'm good. <laughs> Vanessa. What's up? I had a typo um, that I, sh uh, I showed to Caitlin. It's just a question of tense, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It's on page, I'm going to scroll down to the page, 6A2. Um, Mr. Friedman asks if Ms. Healy, blah, 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 blah. She has also faced, it she needs a D. That's it. Move that the board accept the meetings on uh, February 13th, 2018. Second. Um, discussion? All in favor? Okay, um, the next agenda item is to appoint the town accountant. Per the charter, this board is required to appoint a town accountant. Um, Bob will provide us with a few remarks on this appointment, I hope. I think it's a good idea. I, yes. Why well, should him and, show up? And we will, no, the board will then okay. discuss and, and, and vote. Yeah, the, the charter requires you to do it in March, uh, effective July 1st through June 30th. So that's why you're posed with this tonight. <coughs> and obviously, I think you should appoint her. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? I have a motion. Uh, move that the board appoint Sharon Angstrom as town accountant for a term expiring June 30th, 2020, consistent with the requirements of Reading Home Rule Charter, Article 6.3. Second. Discussion. She's terrific. Excellent. Yeah. Hire her back. Yeah. I, I, I think she's been fantastic, especially in presentations. She's very professional and answers questions in a way that um, we can all understand. Thank you. So, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? You tell her to come in tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, can we get some of those chairs out? We got a lot of people standing. I mean, they, you know, yeah. there's a lot of chairs. And, there's some know, chairs. There's some vacancies there's up front. There's a few vacancies up front. And in the so vacancies we don't buy, you can sit in the front row. Yeah, yeah. I mean, got um, long here. Yeah. it gets long in here sometimes. Yeah. You may not want to be standing. 
Oh, Mr. Chairman, yes, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Could you ask what hearing they're here for? Because we might want to take that out of order. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, good idea. To, oh, we can't do that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. Get, right. Get you can do it. You can get right. agenda items. Right. Like, right. Uh, but, belay, yes. belay that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Should have known that. Um, so moving along. In the third iteration, you'll remember. Uh, right now, we just, we're um, going to discuss a change in the ownership of Anthony's coal-fired pizza. Um, for this item, there will be a brief uh, presentation um, by, by Bob. Um, and we'll vote to approve the change of ownership. And I believe this is need necessary because they have a liquor license? Yes. Correct. Yes. Um, it'll be a very brief <coughs> presentation. I, I yep. told their attorney there was no need to come. Um, this is purely a routine paperwork issue, uh, as the board sees from time to time. Um, the police have done a background check, and it came back fine. So there's no hesitation or issues on the town side to, ch to change this paperwork. So Thanks. Fine. Go ahead. Motion. motion. Move the board for the change of beneficial interest for an annual all alcohol liquor license, Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza at 48 Walker's Brook Drive, as presented. Second. Um, discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Great. Um, so I just want to make sure uh, the first hearing reduced speed limit is scheduled for 730, 7.30, and we're good. good. We're yep. good on that. So we can, uh, so we're now going to embark on three public hearings, and um, each hearing will follow the same six-step format, um, so, so just to set expectations. Um, the first, number one, the secretary of the board, Vanessa, will read the public hearing announcement that's required. Um, a speaker will give a presentation on the topic. You see the first speaker is lining up. Um, board members may ask questions of the speakers that they might have. At that point, we open it up to the public to make comments and ask questions. The board will then end the hearing yeah. or uh, vote to end the hearing or the, the board could also continue it at our next meeting, continue the hearing at our next meeting. Once the hearing is closed, the board will deliberate the topic and decide whether or not to adopt the document or the action that's proposed. It, or that too may be postponed to another, another meeting. So that's a, that's a six step process. So um, the first one is a hearing on lowering the speed limits along Haverhill Street, and Vanessa will read um, the, the legal notice. Please take notice that the Select Board of the Town of Reading will hold a series of public hearings on March 12, 2019 in the Select Board's meeting room, 16 Wall Street, Reading, Mass. One, to reduce the speed limit on Haverhill Street, starting at 7.30 <coughs> p.m. Two, to, to amend, uh, well, let's so stop there. Excuse me. All right. Okay, so now it's over to Deputy Chief Clark um, for presentation. Right, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I want to uh, thank everybody that showed up here. I know there's a lot of residents on Havel Street that I can see. For those who don't know me, my name is David Clark. I'm the Deputy Chief of Police here in the Police Department. I'm with me, Lieutenant Christine Amadola, who is my Support Services Division Commander, and Traffic and Safety Officer Michael Scouten. We had asked the board to entertain an idea of dropping the speed limit on Havel Street based on a lot of concerns raised by the residents. A lot of crashes have been happening on Havel Street, and we've done a lot of data research, speed traps, greater traffic enforcement, signed boards. We've collected a lot of data that we present to the board, and we feel that the safest thing to do on Havel Street would be to lower the speed to 30 on that street. And so we're going to do a presentation so everybody has some of the actual factual data. And that's what we'd like to present now. So I'm going to have uh, Traffic Safety Officer Scout and take over. Good evening. Good evening. So we're just circling back. This is the same presentation that was uh, was put out on the 26th of February. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through the just again um, introduction. Uh, Able Street Public Way within the town of Reading uh, starts at the state line 129 Rotary, proceeds all the way north into North Reading. Um, 
Table Street, this is pursuant to the article within the traffic and rules, uh, special regulations that are in the traffic and rule regulations now. Uh, we're trying to uh, try to make the speed limits basically all the same across the roadway. Um, the next slide. So uh, these are the <coughs> enforcements that we've done in the, uh, the past year. So from January 1st, 2018 to December 1st, 2018, we had 195 traffic enforcements, uh, leading up to 5,850 hours of actual enforcement on the roadway. Uh, just within, when I did the, the study, when I started the study on November 1st to December 1st, uh, we had 52 enforcements, leading to 1,500 hours. Um, <clears throat> basically, an enforcement is a 30 hour, uh, excuse me, 30 minute block that an officer will go do on the roadway. And each officer, does two of those blocks within his eight hour uh, patrol period. So these are, this is uh, within January 1st, December 1st, 2018, 252 citations were issued on Haver Street, consisting of warning, civil, criminal, and also leading to arrests. Uh, this is the major concern, one of the most major concerns we're looking at, a three year yield, 11-115 to 11-118, 97 crashes on the Hale Street. 43 rear ends, 12 car to deer, 12 car versus dog, 24 single vehicle crashes, tree and pole, signs, etc. cetera. Uh, eight taking a left off of Maple Street onto Franklin, two versus motorcycle, four failed to yield, and two head-ons. It's, it's a pretty big number. Um, there is concern. Hable Street at the Rotary and Hable Street at Franklin Street. These are the two of the biggest areas on Hable Street. That's the two of the biggest uh, concerns we have. 27% of the total crashes, 14.5% of the total crashes, leading up to uh, 43 crashes, which 41.75%. Getting close to 50% in just those two areas. And we did, one of the part of the things we've asked for with the select board to consider uh, is the, looking at a study to see if a traffic light at Franklin and Haverhill would, would uh, help with traffic flow and help with the accidents as well. So we're asking first, does a study be done, not necessarily put the light in yet, but a study be done to see if that would have any impact on Haverhill Street or Franklin Street at all. Uh, so basically leading in, it's, it, Haverhill Street's made up of uh, four different areas that the speed changes on Haverhill Street. So here down at the bottom of the rotary leads north, this is Timberneck Drive. So within this section of roadway, the road it's 40 uh, miles per hour. We're looking to bring this down to 30 miles per hour. This right here, this is the data within that section. <coughs> this is the average vehicles per day on that roadway. And this is just heading north. Excuse me, we can't, we can't read any of that. Can you call well, 6,028 vehicles on average daily. For what time? So that's 24 hours. That's basically, uh, that study was from 12, 11 to 12, 17. The trailers were out there 24 hours. Uh, so this data was collected over that span. And this, this is an average of vehicles, and this is just heading northbound, 6,000 vehicles. Wow. So that's just the timber deck? This is within the section, this is in the 40 mile an hour section from the rotary to timber deck drive. And I, I had to, what I had to do was, this is a 40 mile an hour speed limit in here. I had to put the trailers within each section, because each section has different speeds. So I had to take data from each section and I had that broken down within the, within the hub. You might be able to see this Excuse me, uh, where it says you're compliant, uh, I'm not sure I really understand that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to break it down all right here. Yes, right. So compliant vehicles, with uh, it was, uh, over 6,000 vehicles, 5,073 compliant vehicles. What does that mean, they pulled over? No, that's no, they within, within the speed limits. Oh, okay. they're, they're, they're going forward or below. Uh, low risk, 941, uh, medium risk, 13, and then high risk, which is over 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, which would be over 60, excuse me, zero. So 81%, this number right here, you want to see close to 85%. This is actually not too, too bad. Um, you want to see this 15% under for complete, you know, compliant driving because um, 
you know, not everybody's going to be going exactly 40 miles an hour. 41, 42, those would fall into the low risk. One other question, if I may. Sure. Uh, of the 192, you know, <laughs> Is that only in the evening? Because I mean, I do notice on Able Street, I can see the lights going by me, and right up to the army, they're just pulling somebody over. That's what in all shifts. How many of those uh, were trucks? Uh, I'm sorry, I have to make a point of order. I, I got swept up in your conversation. Um, this is just a presentation portion, and and um, then the board will ask questions, and then we'll have the the public hearing where the public can ask questions. I I apologize. <laughs> Okay, so here's the second portion. We have uh, Timonet Drive, just past Tom uh, Stonewell section of the roadway. This is 35, so after you come off the rotary, you hit Timonet Drive, it breaks down to 35 miles an hour. So within this section of roadway, there's a school, there's the hockey rink, so this section of roadway at 35 miles an hour, inside here is a 20 mile an hour zone. So people are going from 40 miles an hour, dropping to 35 and potentially down to 20 in this section a little bit. So we're looking to bring this down to 30 miles an hour as well. We're looking for some consistency over the roadway. Uh, numbers, data, 5,000 vehicles uh, over the, uh, the span of, this was out there from 11.10 to 12.9, so this was out there for almost a month. Um, 5,000 vehicles uh, on average, 5,228 vehicles. Okay. So they've broken down again in this section. So compliant vehicles, 37, 3,752, 1,462, low risk, medium risk, 13, and a high risk of one in that section of roadway. So this tower is moving pretty quick. These numbers, uh, this is a high concern. This, like I said, this high, this top number should be around 85%, and these numbers should be 15 and below for a compliant roadway. And this is within that school section of the road. So here's the third section. Just after Stonewell Road, we go from a 35 mile an hour section to a 40 mile an hour section. Uh, this area spans from uh, just past Stonewell Road up to just before Franklin Street. Um, again, um, similar numbers, over 5,000 vehicles. Uh, on average. So these are a little, this one's a little bit more compliant. This area is not as bad. Um, this is the 40 mile an hour section here. Compliant vehicles 46, 20, 742. Medium risk only seven. So these are the kind of the numbers that we're looking for. Unfortunately, we don't have that throughout the whole road. Um, so this is the final, um, Excuse me. Oh, this is come. This is the. Um, this is the uh, the third. Uh, we we'll go back. Yeah, you can go to the next slide. No, this is showing the south. Right. So this the, this is that same section of 35 mile hour road going southbound, 64.95 uh, for for uh, vehicles on that roadway. And you can see the difference in speed. Right? This is a major concern right here. These vehicles are all going southbound. Compliant vehicles 42, low risk 2180, medium risk 53, and high risk 2. 65.6 percent. This number is, is, is not. A, this is a terrible number. It's a very very low number for this area. 34 percent on compliant vehicles within this area. And that's going towards the rotary. This is going towards the okay. rotary. Okay. Yep. And again, this is just a, a, a snapshot of time. This is we just did a block. This is a snapshot of time. So final section of roadway, um, just before Franklin Street, back to uh, the North Reading Line. This area is a 35 mile an hour section. Uh, the biggest concern in this area, the deputy uh, mentioned the, uh, the traffic light. Uh, traffic light at Franklin and Haverhill was suggesting the traffic light there. Um, there's been a lot of accidents in that area. We do not put out yield signs, stop signs, traffic lights to slow traffic down. What we're looking for is safety and we're looking for um, getting people through the intersection uh, with um, uh, with ease. You know, we're trying to get people out onto the roadway. Cars are queuing up here onto Franklin Street. 
you get one car edging out, one car edging out, and then take it off out onto Abel Street. And the vehicles come up here at 40 miles an hour. And if they're not slowing down, it makes it very difficult for these vehicles to get out there. <coughs> there, there is a right um, ramp little uh, area here that they can, they can peel off and go southbound. But because these cars are queuing up, they can't get into that area to go southbound onto Havel Street. What we're trying to do is we're trying to upgrade that intersection, put a light there, and just make it more compliant to the to the intersection and make it much safer. Uh, and a good comparison to that for those who live in Reading, I want you to think of Wuben Street and West Street. West Street is very similar to Havel Street. It runs from the Wuben line to the Wilmington line. That's a 30 there. Wuben Street comes from the downtown. It ends at West Street very similar to Franklin Street. Uh, same amount of traffic, a lot of cut through traffic. So if you think about a traffic light at Haverhill and Franklin, you consider the traffic light at Wuben and West as an example, that has significantly cut down an access in that location. Um, and what Officer Scott was talking about with 85%, the state would like to see, we know not everybody is gonna uh, obey the speed limit, but what you hope to do is get everyone at least 85% of compliance, but without traffic crashes. So here you have a location that has a lot of single vehicle crashes. We had 24 in three years, that's huge. That shows that speed is probably definitely a factor for single vehicle crashes. So just the conclusion here, um, Able Street at the Rotary, um, there's been a lot of rear end accidents. We can lower the speeds. That area is maintained by the, the state. There's not much we can really do with the Rotary itself. But uh, Havel Street and Franklin Street, upgrading that intersection, hopefully will make the intersection um, much safer and much uh, much easier for vehicles to travel within that intersection. It's easier to get eight to 10 cars out with a green light than to have one or two cars edging out and trying to get out onto the roadway. It makes it very difficult uh, in that intersection. We've monitored that area, the traffic enforcement, it's, it's a tough intersection. So those are uh, just, okay. so, is that it? That's what Mr. Jacob. Excellent presentation. I open up to the board for questions. Dan? Yeah, I have two questions. Um, are you going to keep the 20 mile an hour segment there around Killam in this plan? You're not raising that to 30. You just no, keep that 20. The school zone would maintain no, the 20. Our biggest concern is the, the rapid changes in speed. So gotcha. if you had the southbound for 40 to 35 to 20 back up to it's, and we think that's too much. What's your requirement for posting speed limit signs? Is that covered by the thickly settled rule? Or are, we, are you going to post that every couple hundred yards, 30, 30, 30? I think with the change, we should post it okay. um, at least for a while. I know that. How, how many signs are you going to put up? We would probably just replace each sign that's right there right now. So there's okay. probably four to but five if, on each end. If it's approved, we would obviously then put the sign boards out there notifying everybody, um, uh, warning yep. speed limits dropped. Uh, we do a lot of advertisement like we talked about before. <coughs> we'll hit the area very hard with traffic enforcement. Mm -hmm. Hitting the area hard with traffic enforcement does not mean writing everybody tickets. Right. It's right. not money right. generating. It's, warnings. it's education, mm -hmm. slowing people down, being visible, and then start with enforcement down the road from there. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Very. Sure. Uh, thank you. Also, a great presentation. I, I guess I was really surprised for a road that's maybe from the Rotary to the North Reading line, maybe a couple of miles long. Uh, that Four or five. Um, two miles. It's just trying to two. It's about just two, two, two miles. Yeah. That there's so many different speed limits along that short <coughs> period of time right. that, you know, once you see a sign, you just assume that that's going to be the speed limit. So if you see 40, even though maybe a half a mile later it says 30, in your mind, you still think it's 40. So, you know, you're not, probably not in, in compliance. So I, I'm really, I think the consistency, you know, pick a number, I think 30 is a good number, but pick a number and have it be consistent along along that hallway, obviously with the exception of the school zone where, where you want people to slow down. The other part of it, I think 30 being a good number, is that when, I think you said in your last presentation that people coming from North Reading to go into Reading on Haverhill Street, they're at 35, that's their speed limit. Yes. So, and at that point, they were gonna be able to go to 40. So it, it, in some ways, now we want the people in North Reading to slow down, <coughs> right, when they come into Reading. So I think that that's a, that's a good thing, and, and, and I would support just sort of that consistent 30 mile an hour. And the other thing too, I, which I, I, I would encourage, and, and, and I hope people support, is that traffic light on Franklin and Haverhill. Um, I know it's really difficult for cars to kind of inch out if they're going the left or right um, on that. I'm a, I'm a bicyclist. Try doing it on a bike, um, you know, where you don't have that momentum. So um, 
uh, there are times where I just have to sit there and wait till there's nobody there. So um, I, I know the cars are zooming back and forth and that. So the idea of that, I'd like to see what that study um, indicates because I think it might be a really good place for a light. So, but, so thank you. Any questions for the? I just have one. Yeah, this is John. Yeah. So um, 30 is the number. That's what we're recommending. Yeah. Yes. Um, North Ray's got 35. Correct. I don't know that there's a magic to the number, but I'm guessing you guys probably chose 30 for a reason. I think we're, if you look at, when you cross into North Reading, you look at how much more sparse it is up in North Reading. Yeah. I think the 35, and it's a straight, a very straight shot there. I think it makes more sense for them. Us, we have the windier part of the road, and it's, we have a lot more houses and parks and other things on that stretch. Okay. That's why I think the 30 just makes more sense to really just slow everything down and the consistency throughout. But I, I just bring it up, not because I think it's a, a bad number or a good number. I just, I thought there was some method to the, you know, to the suggestion. And um, I think, you know, people like to know. Why I think due to the windiness and the, uh, the amount of houses and everything on that road, that's why I think the 30. Yeah. If you go up to the North Reading, you can see it's a lot more woods and a lot more spread so you've got school, you've got a, you've got a daycare center there, you've got get the, the in and out of the, you got the church, you got the in and out of the hockey rink. I mean, there's a lot going on on that road. So. Yes. And I know that some of the people in this room have experienced the streets they live on um, off of Haverhill is cut through streets as well. So, I mean, there's a lot going on in a lot of places. I, I do know that because I live on that side of town and I'm up and down that street myself, so. Um, Officer Scott, do you, do you, I'm um, sorry? Officer Scott, I have a question. I, no. did, I just had a quick comment. Uh, yes. Just kind of circling back to the speeds and the thought process behind that. Both, uh, both roadways heading towards that school zone is 40 <coughs> miles an hour. So at Timbenek Drive and also just before Charles Street heading into that. So you're doing 40 to 35 to a potentially 20 mile an hour right. zone on both ends of that. Right. So um, it was a good comment made um, about the inconsistency. That's really what we're looking for. We're just looking for a consistent roadway, people staying at one speed, not realizing that they're doing 35, now they're up to 40, now it's now back to 35, and wow, now I'm in a 20 mile an hour school zone. So that's kind of we're just trying to make that a little more consistent. Makes sense. I mean, it's very logical. Um, I had a, a resident resident in during uh, our <coughs> office hour, half hour, which is really half an hour, and um, she asked if there were any alternatives to uh, a street street light there, um, maybe making the turning you know, when you come up to in Franklin to enter Haverhill, um, is there any way to put in some lanes that would break the left turn? The people trying to take a left turn, trying to take a right turn, I understand that's already in place somewhat. But is there any way that you, you can do that to allow the traffic not to back up on Franklin so much without a street light. Honestly, with the property lines and everything, I don't even know that, that, that I'd have to add up the default, the engineering there, the experts on yeah. that, not us. Okay. And I think they have to take a look at it and do some data for us. I don't know if we could even with the property lines there. Yeah. Secondly, it's the concern still is that people edging out regardless, even people coming out on Franklin Street with the left-hand turn lanes, now they have to deal with two <coughs> potential lanes heading northbound, one trying to turn left, one going straight, and trying to take a left out of there. Yeah. Just my opinion, yeah. and just my opinion, I think that would make the intersection worse. Yes. And that's just my opinion, because now they're looking at two lanes and one lane coming southbound. I think that actually might cause more accidents, but right. that's um, what I'm hoping the study would show. But the traffic study will come up with all different types of recommendations oh, okay. based on wait times and Great. safety. So that's what we'd hope to see. Great. They can come up with all different types of solutions. Okay, I just wanted to ask on behalf of the resident. Thank you very much. Any other questions from the board? Okay, so now uh, we move into the um, public, public comment. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the public comment period. Um, could I ask for a show of hands of the number of people who would like to speak on this issue? <laughs> Okay, so in the interest of time, um, I'm going to ask you to keep your comments to two minutes and under, which is actually a lot of time if you speak for two minutes. Um, and I'll ask um, the um, Vanessa, who's our secretary, to um, 
keep a clock and, and uh, yell at me when the two times, the two minute time is, is approaching. <coughs> I'd also ask you to keep your comp state your name, your, addre your address, and um, also r remind people to keep comments um, from getting personal. So no, you address the board, don't start crosstalk, uh, cross discussion in the audience. So with that, uh, I'll open up the uh, public comment, public hearing. Yes. Uh, Yannick Monkevich, 26 Batchelder Road. Just an idea, I grew up in Linfield and there's Main Street and Lowell Street. Mm -hmm. We put a four-way stop in and it's been working for over 20 years, something maybe to think about. A three-way stop makes you stop, and then you have to do courtesy where whoever hit the intersection first gets to go next. <coughs> it's a lot cheaper than a light, probably a lot more, something easier to put in or even try before you put a light in. <coughs> but um, I drove up and down the street this week, <coughs> coming from my house, going to the highway. There's only two postings for the speed limit the whole way that I could find. <coughs> On the way back, there was two for 35 and two for 20, one for 40, closer to my street. So. I don't like 40, I don't like 30, 35 is in the middle of the road. And if it's monitored and people take their time and be a little more courteous, a three-way stop, maybe a stop side of Wakefield Street, because that's pretty crazy there. People just kind of feel like they can go out. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, officers, feel free to answer questions that that you'd like to. Yeah, thank uh, you, Mr. Chair. This hearing. Well, the, part of the study would actually, one of the recommendations they might make is a three-way stop sign <laughs> or widening the road or a traffic light. That's why we're asking for the study to consider to actually have the experts tell us what they think would work best. I understand. But I do appreciate it. I don't but see yes, you'd like hiding it. the road there, though. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> but that's what we, it's one of the things that's what the study would show. Thank you. Next. Yes, in the back. Uh, Andrew Ryan, 209 Haverhill Street. So my concern is that the number of speed, the number of speed limit signs is not enough if you're going to change that, and that your 85% target will actually drop if you do not have better education. Mm -hmm. um, I know we talked about doing sort of education things. I think the signs like on West Street to tell you what your speed limit is and what the what you're what you're actually going would be a good solution for Haverhill Street. And I would ask that that be part of the study. Okay. That's, that's in the yeah, the electric one we can look at, um, but we would at, at put a lot more speed limit signs in throughout the road itself, both north and southbound, so it's quite clear what the speed limit is. Thank you. Next question uh, in the middle, in the back. Yep. Kristen Coppice, I'm on 13 North Drive. Uh, first, I want to thank the board for addressing this. I know it's been a concern that we've raised before. Um, I live at the corner of Timberneck and Haverhill, and maybe, and I noticed some of the numbers on the southbound side, there's that curve, there's a, a pretty big curve when you're pulling out of Timberneck Drive, and the speed limit is 3540. Maybe this will be addressed if the speed limit is lower to 30, but you have to hold your breath and go, because you can't see the cars coming from the left, and they're coming quickly. So if the 30 mile an hour speed limit kind of resolves that, I think that's great. I know no one wants to spend money on more traffic lights, but I often I kind of suggested maybe a blinking light or something, kind of how they have on Salem and Pearl. That's, I think that's Salem. Um, but that you, you can't see the cars. They're coming quickly, um, especially during the rush hour morning, evening commutes. Um, and then I'm a huge proponent of the 30 mile an hour, at least from the rotary to Timberneck Drive, but I know we want to be consistent because cars are flying off of the highway, coming straight down Haverhill Street, and they're cutting through Wakefield and Timberneck, and they're not lowering their speeds. So not only is Haverhill a concern for me, but so is my street, is a side street, and these people are just cutting through. Um, I know that the traffic enforcement has been out there, and so I think if the speed limit is reduced, that we do need to keep up the enforcement on all of those streets. Um, but I do want to thank you for being there, because um, I have noticed an increased presence. Um, and we can bring up the yellow light idea or something, or we can have the, at our next PTTF meeting, the Parking Transportation Task Force meeting, um, and NASA and the engineers can discuss if there's anything we could help down in that area. Too. And I know there have been some accidents at that intersection too, both single and multiple, multiple vehicles. So. I do appreciate the feedback, and I can guarantee you that the traffic enforcement is going to stay, and we're going to increase on some of the side streets to see has it had any effect on the side streets as well. So this is part of a, a, a longer a plan for us. And I did know, I, I think I emailed that Vanessa and John, um, the rush hour period is so much worse. When I'm working from home, we get very minimal traffic on that street. 
but it's at night when people are in the mornings. They're just coming through so much quickly. So that's just my observation. If you can email traffic and safety officer Scouten, the exact time he's looking for, then we, we always do the selective enforcement, the traffic enforcement, based on residents' concerns. Okay. So we'll adjust those times based on your concerns. If you can email him, he will then put it out and we'll sign officers there. Okay, thank so we you. definitely will. Thank you. If I could just make a quick comment on that. I, I know you're on Timonac Drive. A major concern is, is not just Havel Street, it's all the streets. So lowering the speed limit, the thought process behind that is hopefully going to help every street on Havel Street people getting out onto the roadway. Now someone's not doing 40 or over 40 miles an hour, they lower the speeds down to you to a better sight line. Hopefully the cars are slower and you can you know, get out onto the roadway safer that way. I'm glad you brought up uh, John and Vanessa's names. We have liaisons to different um, entities in town and they are uh, our um, liaisons to s for safety. So um, they would be, the appropriate people to help you in those cases. And likewise, likewise with other um, boards and committees, look for our liaison assignments and use those liaisons. Um, okay, the next question, yes. Yeah, Noel Fennessy, 626 Hamill Street, uh, the study in proposed light. Is that going to be, is that study going to happen after the speed limit's been dropped or are we going to do it yeah. before? Yeah, no, this, it, they vote, it depends on the, the vote tonight and um, the speed study would come later. Okay. Yes, in blue, and then I'll get uh, over here. Sure. Bruce, Mary Murphy, uh, 47 Mount Shoulder Road. Um, I like Young's <coughs> idea about the, the stop signs. I think that's better than a light. I live on the other side of that traffic light, so anybody on that other side, like the Timonet, won't feel the repercussions of that light, and I think the traffic is just going to back up down there, and it's going to be a, just a huge inconvenience trying to get out and off my street. Table because I have a, a, a light backing me up. I don't, I don't feel that's the solution, but I do agree with lowering the speed limit. Again, there would be just a study to see would that impact at all, and the study would tell us if that would actually cause a negative impact or a positive impact. And that's why we're not actually saying the light should go in, we're asking for the study for it. Um, over here. Yeah, uh, two parts. Uh, one is I, I appreciated the traffic study of here. It was an eye opener for me uh, to see what your results. And uh, I guess I was thinking that uh, sir, like in front of my house, I live. Your name and oh, sir. I'm sorry. My name is uh, John Sullivan. Thank you. I live you. at 556 Havel Street. Thank you. And uh, the uh, uh, the traffic in front of going past my house, I live on the corner of Granger, uh, extends way down there. Without even running down to find out, it's beyond Stonewell Drive there. And uh, it's moving a couple of miles an hour. It's, you know, it's a traffic jam, I guess, officially. And uh, uh, when you put a set of lights in there, you know, safer as it will be, and I, I certainly agree with that, it's gonna back it up more. And at some point, some undefinable point, people will say, the heck with this. And they're going up Ranger, or they're going up Rustic, or they're going up Charles. And they're like nature. They will find a way that's like 23 seconds faster, and they will time it, and that's what'll happen, you know? And uh, so I, you know, it's a consideration. The other thing is, uh, to me, I, I joke with my neighbors, I don't live on Havel Street anymore. I live on Heavy Trucking Boulevard. And uh, nothing but 22-wheel uh, gravel trucks, uh, caravans, if I use that word, that's so popular today, uh, of uh, cement trucks. And uh, they're rolling. I mean, you can't tell me that they're not speeding. You know, some of them, I think, are overloaded. If you could uh, stand down there at the corner of uh, Franklin, uh, where they all seem to come down Franklin. For some reason, they don't come down from the North Reading on 62. They only come down here. They go through five sets of lights just for the privilege of driving down that little narrow east end of Franklin Street. And uh, uh, just so they can do what? Do it. I don't know what it does. I mean, you can tell me, uh, you know, what? it doesn't so make any sense heavy, to me. We've path. done two heavy truck exclusion studies on Franklin Street, and they haven't met the state requirement. There, you have to have at least 5% of your traffic be heavy trucks and they're not getting there. They're only up like 2%. Yeah. So the other thing is, we, I'm sorry, we have to move on to the next uh, question. Okay. Trying to keep it. Uh, yeah. No, no, I mean, um, the, yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, Brian O'Mara, uh, 12 Batch Elder Road. Um, thank you for this. Um, 
this did eye opening because I knew that this, I know the speed limit changes up and down, but I really didn't even know where until you uh, until you spelled it out tonight. I'm all in favor of the speed limit being uniform all the way down. I'm more in favor of 35 than 30, but whatever is safe. But um, agree the other batch elder residents. I couldn't be more against a light at Franklin and Averill, and I know safety is the concern. I'm thrilled that we're doing the study. I'm excited to hear that it'll offer multiple uh, solutions, possibly. But the volume, I mean, I'm blown away by the volume of vehicles on that road. I never dreamed it was that high. If you take that volume and then put a light there at Franklin and Averill, I'm, I'm really concerned about the backup that that's going to create. Um, so I'm eager to hear what the studies. I'm glad we're taking this in stages, not saying we're going to do all this at once, possibly lower the speed limit, then take a look at the light. But let's see what impact, if we lower the speed limit, what impact that has, and then move on toward the light. But I'm eager to see what the study says. But um, I would be completely against the light, that, especially with that volume of traffic. I feel like that's going to create a ton of congestion. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Steve Patterson, 572 Haverhill Street. Uh, the, the, the volume, uh, it's in a vacuum. So 6,000 cars a day. How does that compare to West Street? How does that compare to Woburn Street? How does that compare to Main Street? Main Street has about 20,000 cars a day. I, um, I do not know West Street, most recent one. Off the top of my head, I don't know so the 6,000 cars a day in one direction. So you're looking at almost 12,000 cars daily yeah. heading north and south. Sailor Street is close to 15,000 vehicles a day. Main Street, as it says, up, upwards of 20,000 vehicles uh, daily. So, so you're talking about, at least as far as we can tell, the third busiest street? It's either the third or fourth busiest. Yeah. Okay, so, so significant amount of traffic. And I guess the second question is, um, uh, uh, is a process related question. Where, where do we go from here? I, I think that mo most people who live around that area are in favor of a uniform speed, uh, speed limit and whatever it may be, but a uniform one. But what's the process? You guys vote on it, and then it's approved, yeah. and then we move forward with a traffic study? Yes. And then the implementation, if, if you approve it, mm. is it immediate? Are we, you know, next week, two months? How long does it take to actually make it happen? Yeah. Yes, Bob. Uh, we need to put up signs. Yeah. yeah. So, it depends how long it snows. It's it's imminent. It's imminent is the answer, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What we can do is in advance we can probably put the speed limit speed board signs out, notifying everybody of the upcoming uh, such, such a date, the sign, the speed we're changing over to thirty if it's thirty and we can let people know that we can put those signs out throughout the street, educate social media, postings and everything and let people be aware of that. I will be watching carefully. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. And then uh, you, and then you. I I'm sorry, could you say your, say your name? I, I, I sympathize there with you, sir. Were you pointing, were you pointing at me? Or I was, and could you repeat your name because sure. I was talking over you? Sure. Tim Perpopio, 553 Haverhill Street. Um, just wondering, is it possible to reduce the size of the vehicles on Haverhill Street as they do uh, Saugus, um, mm -hmm. the Fellsway, and, and other other surrounding towns of making the having the bigger vehicles have to take Main Street as opposed to mm -hmm. I just, just the trucks mm -hmm. themselves are, are scary and they're going fast. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that with your study as far as your speed. I'm going to say that in the morning they're going a lot faster than coming home at night. It's either <coughs> like they're coming home to and they're late for work. I don't know which way it's going, but I just, I know what when it's yeah. Yeah, fair question, and also similar to your question there. Um, so you'd have to do a state traffic study. They have to be over 5%, but you also have to find alternate routes for these trucks. Right. Um, and <coughs> so yeah. but that doesn't get them to your house when you want a furniture delivery or when you want something. So unfortunately, it's the, honestly, it's the hardest traffic enforcement for the police department because trucks are allowed to go down there, even if there's an exclusion, if they have business in the area. Um, so we would also have to get with North Reading and find a whole new truck route. Um, so it's a, it's a big deal to make a heavy truck exclusion. Um, it's a state law, it's not even our law, and it's very hard to enforce. Yeah, but if we're talking about safety, I don't think that there would be anything that we want to uh, 
We haven't found any significant safety problems with the heavy trucks. Not well, if you're at my mailbox, mm -hmm. you have to suck your stomach in sometimes <laughs> to get your mail. But just keep in mind that's that's up, that's up to the state. So we'd have to do a, a, a whole other study on that, whole other presentation, to have them adopt it, and then again, with this, not just okay, it's a truck exclusion. What are the, then they have to designate all the alternate routes and everything else. So it's actually a, a bigger thing. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm not saying we're not listening to your safety concerns, but it's a lot bigger process than the select board voting on lowering the speed the speed limit. Thank you. Yes, B uh, Bill. Yes. Uh, so I believe the post office department goes down that street, mm -hmm. and they have the right to go any street they wish. Mm -hmm. they, they even had the right to go up uh, Haven Street from the uh, post office there, the one direction. So. Yeah, there are a lot of exceptions. The yeah. post office is one of them, the T is one of them, all the DPWs are, there's a lot of exceptions to the truck rule. And by a truck. Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, s sir. Uh, Chuck Marshall, 565 Table Street, and I'm just here to support the lowering of the speed limit. I'd like to thank the police department and the selectmen for considering it. We've been on Haverhill Street at the apex between Franklin and Granger mm -hmm. on the northbound <coughs> side, and we're neighbors to the Procopia. Getting out of our driveway in the morning is literally impossible at times, as is getting out of the driveway at night when people are coming home. Um, when the traffic enforcement signs were down by just past Granger, um, on the southbound side, walking down that street, there was cars going 58 to 62 miles an hour. Um, I don't think that at any point in time, a lot of the cars are going any more than 40. They're, they're speeding, flying by the house. Yeah. And Tim is right. You try to get your mail on that street. It's almost been hit three times. We've had cars end up in our front yard three or four times tracks over our lawn, um, crashes on both sides of that street, right by Granger. It's a, it's, a, it's a safety hazard and a detriment to the people that live there. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's a woman over the middle end. I don't think it's here. It, what, yes, you, that's Hi, great, we'll start. I live at 197 Haverhill Street. Um, I really appreciate the study and it's been very eye-opening for me. I've been, I'm in big support of the 30 mile an hour limit for Haverhill Street. Um, the numbers are really, I, I also agree with the signage. We don't have very good signage on the street. Um, my street or in front of my house is where the 35 miles an, an hour limit sign. I also have the added benefit of being a blind driveway. Um, so that's a lot of cars and a lot of people that are not in the compliance uh, of that zone. And I, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be some adjustment period at the beginning and I'm at the higher speed limit. Um, and um, with the blind driveway, I really, really appreciate a blind driveway. Thank you. And yes. I'm Kristen Schwartz, 240 Maple Street. Um, thank you for the study. It's really eye opening how many vehicles go down the street. I just want to mention that the southbound, the area that you were talking about from Timberneck to Franklin, that's the only sidewalk, and that is where the biggest traffic violations were. That's where all the children walk to school. Um, and in the morning, they are flying down the road. Yeah. And I think, you know, during the day, there's not much traffic. But when everyone's walking to and from school, it can be really terrifying to yeah. hear the vehicles flying past us. So just to keep that in mind, and with that said, I am definitely in favor of lowering to 30 because there are a lot of children on the street who are walking to Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And then. Good evening. My name is Sean Glenn over at uh, 387 Hickel Street. So our driveway, which we share with two other properties, is directly across from the end of Charles Street. 
uh, the Hill Epic filament. Um, and just before our driveway, as you're going northbound, there's an S turn there between Timothy and Dove Driveway. Um, we've had two accidents there when our kids have been crossing the street at the crosswalk, which is after a driveway. And it's because the first car stops, which is usually after about 10 or 12 cars are right by us. But the first car stops, and the second car doesn't have time coming around that bend to stop. So I'm teaching my kids wait until the second and third cars behind <laughs> stop. So I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and the same thing as what my neighbor said is we are, you're watching each direction. And when you go, you commit to going out of your driveway and getting across the street quickly. So my kids right now are 13 and 12. I have not, I'm very worried about teaching um, their friends who become new drivers how to get in and out of our driveway. Yeah. Uh, so I support the study and the lower east people. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, North Tennessee, 626 Arial Street. Just to clarify the question on the study, so if the speed limit gets lowered, you're going to collect new data, see what that is, and then commission a study. Is that accurate? Yeah. The, um, the last I heard is the study wouldn't be until the fall, at least, um, by the engineer. I don't know if you want to speak about So how much data would we carry that they don't need six months' worth of data? Is that enough, or, or actually it's even less than six months' worth of data? No, they don't do that long. It would probably be... The engineering department is usually, what, a 30-day study about? No, it, it, sorry, you're asking between when we lower the speed limit yeah, to we just get the traffic light? What I'm saying yeah. is, yeah, I mean, you lower the speed limit, we don't post signs <coughs> until late spring, early summer, or whenever the snow melts. I mean, is, is five or six months enough time to let people adjust their behavior before you can take a, a new sample and see what the numbers look like? Yes, yeah. I feel it's more than enough time, because we'll, we'll, we'll hit it hard and heavy with the enforcement and everything to make sure we have enough accurate data for them. <coughs> Other questions? Um, uh, any, any, who, anyone who hasn't spoken yet? Uh, okay. Any quick? Oh, yes. Yeah, I was wondering, will we, if, will we get information as to what comes out of this meeting and when the next meeting will be, and how will we be informed? So, um, yes. At the, if you stay for our deliberation, um, we may vote on this. And so you'll find out uh, tonight okay. um, uh, if, if that occurs. And then um, the, 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 I think they've explained how this will be implemented. Yes. And then um, the police officers have also explained well how they would do the traffic light study if, if the board approves it. Yeah. Um, just one yeah. second, follow up question. Uh, just the. No, we will. No, well, yeah, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, technically someone could <coughs> move the question or something, but I, I don't think that's going vote. to happen tonight. We're going to vote, yeah. Bob. If I might, uh, Mr. Chair, just ask the uh, residents, how did you find out about the meeting, and what's the best way for us to communicate with uh, you? The My neighbor. My neighbor. Yeah. Who's the neighbor? Raise your hand. You want to have a point person? Yeah. All right, see if this person's <laughs> name matches. <laughs> Copio. Um, okay. I think, very, very ahead. I think All mailing. Right. Yes. I think mailing or emailing or texting would be fine. Okay. You know, any okay. any way that um, any way that you I'm can still do set it. up with the town. Yeah. Oh, okay. so it's yeah. pretty easy. Oh, okay. good. Thank you. Uh, yes, Vanessa. Huh? Bob, for changes like this, do we ever have, I mean, we have clearly a good selection from the neighbors here. Is it, do we compile an email list that then a blast goes out to when the change takes effect or something like that? So that, I mean, clearly these are interesting people, so I don't know how it's happened in the past. Yeah. Um, typically in the past, about one or two neighbors have taken that on and yeah. formed their own email groups. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's more reliable, honestly. Um, we also use social media was used pretty extensively in this. Did you end up using Code Red? I believe Jane Miller um, yeah. used Code Red. That would have been the, the town notifying the residents. We'd asked her to target, because you can target a specific area. We asked you to target us. Did, did the town mostly everybody? Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. We didn't yeah. get there. Did you opt in? Yeah. You, you opted in for Code Red? Have you signed up for it? It's signed up. Not that I know of. Okay. That's the first I've heard of it. Uh, it's a system the town uses. You have to opt into it. You put your number, your phone numbers in. And when the town's sending out messages, we can oh, target well. a certain area. If there's emergencies, okay. so we can. You go on the, the police website to get that? Or uh, the, the town. 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 town website. I believe you say is uh, yeah. 
a man missing and then you know, we got to look out. Okay, yeah, we'll yeah, get them. Yeah. We get right. those calls usually, okay. but we didn't get them about oh. this meeting. Right. Mm, I'm not sure. Up up. Or maybe yeah. just an emergency? Yeah, some people signed up for emergencies only, some have signed up for all notifications. So without that, you, you might want to add yep. that uh, check. check and see what you signed up for. Yeah. No, yes, I, I know. I know. It should be easier than this. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jim Taylor, 541 Haverhill Street. Uh, I'm going to play the role of Captain Obvious <laughs> and uh, state that uh, the most effective enforcement of the speed limit on Haverhill Street has been the presence of, of the police. Yes. Especially from 6 to 9 a.m. and 4 to 7 p.m. Second uh, question, as part of the study, that the traffic light study that you're going to do, could you include possibly putting a traffic light instead at Charles and Haverhill Street? Two reasons, or actually one reason. Uh, it's very difficult to get out of Charles Street onto Hazel Street to go <coughs> northbound uh, any yes. time of day. It's yeah. even worse now with the construction that's going on at that intersection. But uh, yes. it's because what, what you end up doing is you come down to Charles Street and you stop and you got to look, you got to screen from yep. right to see cars coming around the corner from the front of the Is that? Makes sense to take a look at that in a, in, in a PTDF meeting, or a yeah, we can bring it up for the next uh, parking traffic okay. station task force meeting, yes, and then right. see if uh, talk to them. We'll look for a study for that, okay. Um, so looking to we have two more public hearings that, that we, we need to get through this evening. Um, any other quick questions? Yes. Okay, I have a oh. quick question, uh, for, Dave, for the officer. Yep. My name is Dan Lane, 419 Hazel Street. I guess, um, is there any thought or data that suggests that by lowering the speed limit, might there be less volume of traffic on the April Street as a result? There's no way of knowing that. Sir. Um, basically, just lowering the speeds, as I stated earlier, was hopefully to assist some of the side roads, get more of a consistent speed, and uh, just to have everybody you know, more compliant driving on the roadway, hopefully uh, less crash. And that's what kind of led us to also Franklin Haverhill was the, the crash data and trying to look at you know, pinpoint these really troubled areas. We don't have any comparison to the town that we've lowered to see if that has impacted yeah, that. It, it would be an interesting yeah. follow-up. And we can definitely do another speed study with the month to see if the numbers go down. Andrew? Andrew. Yeah, Mr. Chair, is yeah. a question? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. okay. Sorry, I had, had a little conference there. Very quick, I promise. Yes. Has there been any consideration for um, additional crosswalks? I was just reminded of my issue because the children going to school, and I just wanted to put that out there. So there's no crosswalks on Haverhill Street. There's no crosswalks on Haverhill Street. There, I don't think there are enough. Ar enough yeah, around the school. Yeah, side streets. Yeah, so. okay. Over here. Uh, quickly, uh, can we email you for a copy of this presentation? Or will that be made available? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Uh, can we put uh, on, the we on our website? Yeah. Yeah. The town manager yeah. can yeah. field this one. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I think probably you ought to post it up on social media as well. Sure. Yeah. A lot of people look there. Okay. All right. Um, I just had a, a brief chat with the um, town manager. And if, if you all, it's great to see such interest. Um, in, in this uh, process. And if you find it beneficial to, when you when this is over and you step outside, um, to create a, a point person or two, um, just so we make sure, you know, we try to reach you in a number of different ways, but it's not, um, it's not totally foolproof. And uh, so you might want to consider that, okay? Um, so I, I'd like to, <coughs> is there a motion to end the? Move that the board close the hearing regarding the speed limit change on Haverhill Street. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? I think you got a, oh, sorry. Is there a motion? Yeah. I have a motion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, move that the board approve amendment 2019-1 to the town of Reading traffic and parking regulations reducing the speed limit on the entire length of Haverhill Street as presented. 
as a point of clarification, an option here is to decrease the speed limit to 30 miles an hour for the entire length of the road. Except for the school zone. Except for the school zone. Mm -hmm. Second. 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 Okay. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Uh, yeah, there were very second. Discussion. Um, I, John. So one thing I would like to say relative to staying in touch, um, Kristen has emailed myself and Vanessa a couple of times actually, and, that, and it's welcome. Um, we work, the two of us, are, it's our responsibility to work closely over there. So if you want to isolate us um, with the, you know, if you put together a little committee, kind of an email chain, and you want to, you know, maybe on your way out, um, exchange those names and so forth, and then stay in touch with us, and everything we get, you'll get. It is posted, you know, all the, like, tonight was posted, but um, believe me, not everybody wants to climb through the morass of government. I get that. Sometimes if we can make that a little easier for you, um, that's part of why we subdivide ourselves a little bit, so you shouldn't hesitate, as Kristen has in the past, to uh, email us, because it gets results, you know? I mean, it works uh, when you do that, so, I, you know, my discussion on this is, uh, I think this is, you know, we need to have consistency. They've done a great study. They've justified, I think, where they're, what they want to get done now and what they want to look at in the future. And I think we just need to get moving on. So, Vanessa. Uh, there were numerous neighbors that commented on the 35 mile per hour potential limit as well, so I want to recognize those. Um, I'm in favor of 30 mile per hour. Uh, it's what the um, police has recommended, and given the other concerns as far as pedestrians, driveways, I think 30 mile per hour is the way to go. But I, I did want to recognize those that wanted to limit a little bit higher. Yeah, also. Barry. Yeah, um, part of the reason why I think 30 is the right number is because even when you're doing great, you're only getting 85% compliance. So if you have 35, that means there's a lot of people going 40 and 45. If you're getting 85% compliance and you're at 30, well, maybe they're going 35. 35 is safer than 40 or 45. So for that reason, I'm going to support the 30. Uh, anyone else? Um, I'd like to first thank the officers who came in tonight and did a great presentation. And I really appreciate you answering the residents so directly, uh, on the spot, so to say, so to speak. Um, I, I support the, the, uh, this, this 30 mile an hour speed limit uh, with the 20 mile an hour in the school, in the school zone. Um, I think my only comment is what, I he what I've heard that most concerns me of all is, is that people s flying through a school zone at over, uh, you know, over 20 miles an hour. Um, I would hate for us to see, as we all would, a kid get uh, hit and hurt or, or worse. So, um, you know, I, I know you, you do the best you can, you're stretched thin, but um, that really ang angers me to hear, hear that. Um, and I hope that we are um, aggressive with those drivers. Um, any other comment? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Five zero. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I want to thank all the residents for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two minute, yes, yes, two minute break. <laughs>
um, I'd like to, yes. uh, given the hour and the fact that, um, and the fact that, um, <laughs> Thank you, thank, thank, Mr. Sergeant at Arms. Thank you. Yes, th thank you. Uh, Bill. So my uh, agenda disappeared. So uh, I'd like to ask the board if it's okay. We have staff here for the water, sewer, and storm rates discussion. We we'd like to get that done this evening. So if 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 it's okay with the board. I would like to take that out of order because it's already oh, sure. 8.45. Yeah. Um, so we, moved. we can start. Okay, a second? second? All in favor? I'll read the hearing. You please. Okay. Uh, please take notice that the Select Board of the Town of Reading will hold a series of public hearings on March 12th, 2019 in the Select Board's meeting room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass. Um, to approve water, sewer, and storm water rates for fiscal year 20, beginning at 8.45 p.m. Um, actually, we're supposed to have a discussion on second water meter. Well, why don't we just let them go? Let them go. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Go either way. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bob, take it away. Thank you. Um, thank you again for doing this in March. Uh, the last several years, boards have done this, and this allows FinCom tomorrow night see a rate and, you know, probably importantly, town meeting when they're voting on things that are So that's helpful. Um, this is a standard presentation I've done for several years. I'll go at a bit of a quick pace, but please slow me down if yeah. you need to. Um, there's five elements that determine rates. Other factors are generally minor. The other four can be uh, largely important or, or less important. The, um, First two, we have some control over the cost and the prices. The Dubberry assessment and the use of reserves, you have control over your indemnity. Bob, could I ask you just a quick question yeah. before you head down this trail? I know that we had intended to um, have a short discussion about second water meters. Mm -hmm. Would that discussion have an impact on our decision about rates? Um, yes, it would. And um, to jump to that now, to just make a couple comments. Um, I think it's in the best interest of everyone if you're going to change your second water meter that you give some lead time so that this summer would be too fast. Bob, you speak up a little bit. Just behind the kitchen. Okay, sorry, Bob. All right. Um, I thought you were doing that. No. That's not like um, Thank you. So uh, you, we can certainly discuss second water meets during the presentation or okay. after. Um, as a practical matter, you are now setting, you're being asked to set rates starting next December. So starting a second water meter policy next winter, December, whatever it is, would be reasonable and appropriate. Um, if you do it in the middle of a year that way, then the impact on rates is less and whatever I show you tonight can be dealt with. If you were to say you wanted to start them tomorrow, um, we'd really have to do some math to see if the current rates this year would yeah. support yeah. that change. I, that's so, I'm just asking that question yeah. because yep. there's been there enough is. that's come our way that we really have to talk about right. it. And if it was a decision to go in one direction other than the one we're in, I just was wondering right. what the impact would be to this right Yeah, here, and, so. and real simply put, um, the amount of money we need to collect on sewer won't change when you add a second water meter if you do. But the relationship between the first water meter and the sewer charges we need to make would change. Right. Yeah. And in some ways, we're going to have to estimate what that is because we don't know. Well, I'm asking that because in, re in looking at the, the material you sent out mm -hmm. to us in advance, um, it, it was pretty clear that we may be experiencing some increases. Yes. Um, and if that's the case, the whole second water meter thing begs a certain question because those increases will have to be calibrated to match the fact that a certain amount of second water meters wouldn't be mm -hmm. right. wouldn't be taxed that right. way. I mean, you know, it's right. kind of, you know, you pay for what you use is yeah. the idea behind a second water meter, but there's the, the financial implications are not small. I get that. Um, so I, I don't want this to get lost in the shuffle again, okay. I guess yeah. is what we I'm saying. We are going to have a little we, bit of we, a discussion we, on this. We will have a discussion on this. Um, I, th I want to get the feeling of the board. I think implementing a, a two-meter 
uh, change now is impractical. Midstream is really what you're talking about if you do it now. Right. I get that. Uh, yeah, midstream being a nice analogy. Is that nice what we're saying? Analogy. Uh, I would much prefer you to implement it in a year from now or, you know, effectively next spring, a year from right. next spring. To take into effect then in the, the and December you, of the of, of You know, you may, you may want to get more information to finally make a decision as opposed to making that tonight. I don't know. I will tell you that um, when we last did peer analysis, I want to say four or five years ago, um, most communities have a second water meter, but many charge a higher rate for the second water meter, which in my different mind, water rate. Yeah, it right. kind of defeats the purpose of making right. the change. Higher, but not, purpose not as high as the combined rate. Um, probably true, yeah. yes. Okay. So, so there's a lot of moving parts. So, this, yeah, so let's, yep. okay. let, if, if we could, um, yeah, I, I just we will have that discussion. That. So there's no real coupling at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't say so, no. Dan. And so, so Bob, <laughs> Please continue. Okay. Um, so for FY20, um, again, I, I mentioned there's a couple things we have some control over that's in green. Um, water, the um, local costs, as, as FinCom will see tomorrow night, is just over 3%. Debt capital is very modest next year, just for one year. And the MWA assessments were just uh, updated a couple weeks ago, and they're not too bad at 3.3. So the water budget, not great, so budget is up just over 2%, which is one of the lower ones in recent years. Uh, by contrast, the sewer budget um, is up eight over 8%. Eight um, our wage costs in sewer are higher because we're actually transferring one worker from water to sewer okay, because nice of demand. So the wages are a little lower in water and a little higher in sewer for that reason. Um, you can see it's a big jump in capital and debt in sewer, and I'm going to talk a lot more about that. And sewer is the area that's under more financial pressure from the NWRA. <coughs> And as I'll show you also, the MWA assessment is much more impactful on the total sewer costs because it's a much bigger percent of the fund. Is that why our sewer charges are always more than our water charges? Yeah, and will always remain there, I, I think, for the foreseeable future. Um, this talks about the economic development. There's another slight upward adjustment this year, which will save almost a percent on rates. Uh, last year was a bigger jump. It saved 3 or 4% on rates. Mm -hmm. This year it's a, mi a minor jump. Um, and there's still a lot more development uh, queued up, if you will. So this pattern could continue for a couple more so years. So, 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 yeah, just is, is it okay if we interrupt you no, with these questions as you go along? Because yeah. I have a question on this too. Barry. Yes, yeah, so thank you. So obviously if we're developing more, we're selling more water, which is mm -hmm. great. But does it add to our cost? Is, is that net gain or is that? I mean, the infrastructure is there, right? So. Right. You know, we're not adding, it, it adds, or are we? It adds an MWRA cost on a lagged basis. Okay. Um, they charge us based on, is it last year's use? Sewer is three year average, water is just one year. So if suddenly you grew a lot, it's like the Volk School, you're paying you know, tuition on last year's right. enrollment, we're paying on last year's usage for one year. The second year you'd be paying on the current usage. But most, most of our costs in water are, if you will, fixed. You know, we don't necessarily have to hire more staff because we're selling more water. Or build more pipes. No, correct. So your infrastructure is there, so correct. you're just pumping more through it. And yeah, so the MWH kind of charge is the most okay. variable okay. depending on usage. Right. I get, that was part of my question. So then <clears throat> the water conservation helps, selling less water helps. Um, in the MWRA facet of the right. equation. I got it. I, but is that right? I mean, I it, thought, it, it I does. remember Fred telling me exactly the opposite of that. Well, <laughs> if, Fred you're, if you're buying less water from the MWRA, <laughs> it costs less money. Yeah, but we charge it, we're getting less revenue. But if you the have cost a lower per cubic foot is Yes, if you have a lower higher. volume, the rates will go up. Because you fix all so, fix. Let's say I used 100, whatever it is, 100 cubic feet per year, and yeah. my rates are 10. And I suddenly cut down to half. If nothing. If everyone does the same, the rate's going to double. I use half, but the rates double. I'm paying the same because the water costs are the same. Exactly. So, so we conserved ourselves into a conundrum. Well, that's what happened. And if you can see this long chart, a lot of this is water conservation, and it does drive rates up, but it may not drive up your bill. That depends on how much you use. So right. are you s using less water at a faster rate than rates are going up? Is the, is the However, sort of the, the real bill, which is how much you pay, includes sewer. 
and the real that's bill has a lot of fixed costs that doesn't make any difference how you use right, water. Right. Or, or I think that's the reason that you know this other topic is yeah. you know. So conservation out. basically it's a social policy thing. It's not necessarily right. save money thing. Correct. It does the opposite actually. So I, I thought that our the the rate for our water was based on sort of um, our you know the the MDRBRA has a pie yep. of water that they sell. And the larger the portion of the pie uh, that we have, the larger amount of fixed costs will need to be will need to cover the MWRA. Is that that statement that, is correct? Okay. Um, so, if we're taking a bigger share of yeah. the MWRA's water, we're going to pay more. No question. Pay more, a higher rate. Um, I'll just say pay more dollars. Yeah, because then, of the volume, not because, because of the fixed cost. And then the rate calculation comes into, you know, how did you do relative to other towns in terms of what the MDR has got you're right, here. right. But if we're if we're buying more water at a faster rate than other communities, we will pay more, both dollars and rate. And then so if you dollars and rate. If, okay. if the water usage goes back up to what those levels were. Um, it depends as to what the rates would be. If no more building happened in town and just usage went up, the rates would go down quite a bit, but your water bill would probably not. Yeah. So water rates and water bills are often inverse. Right. right. It's the simplest way to look so, at it. But, but people react to the bill, not the rate. I would say that's generally true in yeah. collections, but the rate's what gets the publicity. At Beaver Road, when Mrs. Halsey opens that. <laughs> It's the bottom line. Yeah. She could care less what the rate is. Yeah. She wants to know how much she's sending every quarter. And when that number continues to grow, you know, I mean, one of two things. Either we had to stop showering so much or we have to figure out what's causing. <laughs> but it won't really matter. Uh, if you, so. <laughs> because the, because. All right. The, uh, uh, yeah. well, Sorry. That, Let's, uh, uh, John, are, are you. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm done except to say that this is not as simple as it sounds. Correct. Correct. Okay. The, the other factors I mentioned have a minor impact. Uh, some years, no impact. I'm suggesting a very small uptick this year. Um, just making sure our reserves are healthy. We're going to, um, this was used to be at 5%. We went down to 3 and 3 quarters, and we think 4 is a little safer, if not a, not a big change. Um, you have very healthy water reserves, um, as FinCom will learn tomorrow night. There's a request for almost 500,000 to be transferred out of sewer. That's the uh, issue I mentioned Charles with Charles Street. No. Um, that's, that's fine because it's a $5 million reserve fund, so it's almost not noticeable. Um, we like to keep a target of about two and a half million for each fund for things like this, um, which means you have you know half those reserves to use to you know, help reduce the rate impact. But just like free cash in the budget, the more you use in this year means yeah. it's more difficult in the future because you have to keep using those amount of reserves or you're right. just going to get a rate increase because your reserve use went down. No other reason. Uh, yes, Barry. So um, can you explain? I, mean, I know how free cash is regenerated. How is how are water and sewer reserves regenerated? <clears throat> um, very similar. Storm water, not. But water and sewer, pretty similar. Um, we, we collect more revenue than we budgeted or anticipated. Um, it's definitely an inexact science. There's lots of small pieces like collections related. Mm -hmm. How fast are people paying? Are they letting them go onto the tax bill? Um, and, and obviously just how much water are you selling? Um, we, we have a complex budget formula to figure that out, but honestly, all the little pieces don't add up to much, uh, much of an impact on a $5 million fund. All the pieces might be 100,000. Right. Um, so when your revenues exceed what you predicted, that's the most likely source of um, reserve <coughs> buildup. It's also true that some years um, they don't spend what the budget had. So sometimes capital projects cost less. That doesn't okay. happen that often, but sometimes it does. And in the past, especially in the stormwater fund, that was the reason the reserve fund grew because you don't get unexpected revenue from stormwater. It's a flat fee per house. The commercial one might be a little unexpected, um, but the lack of completing uh, capital projects is what drove that balance. Up. So similarly, similarly to our conservative budgeting process on the operating budget, yeah. we tend to want to have on, on, on water and sewer, we, we don't, 
we're less concerned about trying to lower the rate, right, and having the healthy reserves, because if we have the reserves, we can then apply that to lower the rate, you know, lower the rates next time, as opposed to trying to be really f fine about it and just saying, well, pick a number. Instead of raising it 5%, we can, we can raise it 2% because we know we have the reserve. So is, is that kind of a similar, is that, that a fair correct. analysis? And, and honestly, the biggest difference is obvious here. You don't have a prop two and a half cap on water and sewer. It's whatever you vote. If you had a cap, um, we could never do the capital projects we do except by asking for an override about every five years to right. get water and right. sewer. Right, okay. So. All right, that makes sense. <clears throat> Any other questions? This is a similar uh, scenario that we've shown in the last few years uh, that the board seemed to enjoy. Um, if you use the same level of reserves as the current year, uh, rates in water will go up 3.7%. That's this line right here. If you use no reserves at all, they'll go up 12%. So that's, that's the penalty, if you will, for getting hooked on reserves, is you're, you're hooked on some amount down here so you don't see the 12. And then there's different gradations in between which we can talk about. Yeah. Yes, yes, Vanessa. Um, I, I saw further along in the presentation that I think you made the recommendation to go at 75%, which is the 425,000. Is that your recommendation okay. there, Earl? Um, when I finish sewer, I'll explain. I think that's the, that's the safest place. More broadly, then, yeah. is this similar to what the discussions we've had with use of free cash for the operating budget, where you, it's generally considered bad practice to dip into these reserves or? Um, that's an element of it, but in water and sewer especially, it's much more dependent on future expected capital spending. So you'll see that there's a lot more future capital spending as much as just next year in FY21. So that's why you want to be a little more cautious about using reserves. Thank you. Um, sewer is is higher as, as it was shown in the budget it's higher 12 percent for water with no reserves 15 percent if you didn't use any reserves in sewer and again if you use the same amount eight percent um, so just to put them all together you know, this would be the combined increase depending on levels of reserves and you can pick any amount for water and any amount for right. sewer I'm just showing you examples um, as I look further out uh, well, I'll look backwards first. This is your historic, recent historic changes in water and sewer. Mm -hmm. um, this 11% jump back here was because we were misestimating the conservation and we were not selling nearly as much water and we had to raise rates just to recover the fixed costs, if you will. Yeah. So that was, a, that was an accounting reason, um, wasn't a budget reason. <clears throat> this minus 7% is when the board voted to eliminate the 10% discount, so it was really like a 2.9 or 3% increase. Uh, last year, there was such an uptick in usage, um, the board was able to leave rates the same for this, you know, for two years in a row. That gives you the backwards look. Um, I think this might answer your question, Vanessa. I'm sorry for the black print, it's a little hard to read, um, but it was a lot harder to change it to white. Can you grow that? Um, not easily, John. Okay. Well, then let me read you the important yeah, things. I'm sure it's in here. I know it's in here. So. Um, this year in water, or I should say in FY20 in water, mm -hmm. uh, our capital and debt, our capital infrastructure spending is 36% of the cost. In sewer, it's 12% of the cost. And again, I mentioned the MWRA is much more a factor in the sewer budget. It's 75% of cost. It's only 33 in water. Um, this year in water, we had a very small projected growth in capital spending, which I mentioned earlier. But next year in FY21, it's going up 16%. So that's why, you know, if you look at the projections, 2.2% as a budget and 8% next year, the first thing that tells me, and I, I can tell you the pattern continues beyond that, is be careful in water how much reserves you use this first year, because this is a relatively good year, looking out the next three to five years. Because of because anticipated of capital, capital. Anticipable, yeah, capital spending, but but also but also yeah, too aren't aren't we aren't we <coughs> really you know over the next two three four five years aren't we really anticipating just selling a lot more water? Um, yes, but just like uh, you know general fund budgeting, we don't do too much on new growth. We're careful. Yes, we probably will, and that might mit that and that could potentially mitigate the absolutely. the capital costs absolutely so, the rate. Right. Yes. It'll grow the reserves. 
for that. It'll do that in the first year when you don't know about it. And then going forward, when you adjust for the volume, it'll help lower the So rate potentially rates. we could choose to use a little bit more water reserves for the water rate and a little less reserves on the sewer. We don't have to do it the same percent. Oh, yeah, you can use any amount then, in either fund, absolutely. Because anticipating that we're going to have more use, so we can use more reserves on the water. Just And then just, just to kind of soften the, the increase, the overall increase. Um, and then just to finish up in sewer, um, again, capital is much less of a factor locally for the rates, but this year is a 32% increase and next year is a 24%. Those are less impactful than our spending on water infrastructure, but they're still big numbers. Um, and if you look at our, um, our capital and our debt plans in water and sewer, um, there's no end in sight to how much money we need to spend. There's a lot of unaddressed capital. It's not urgent by any means, but um, GPW did a water, uh, water pipe evaluation I'm going to say maybe seven years ago or eight years ago. And we're at most 25% through, I think. Does that sound about ballpark right? Yeah. It was the most urgent 25, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, this town still has a lot of 1890s water mains. Yep. You know, you should be uh, taking care of things on a regular basis or setting aside money for it. Right. We didn't do that. No surprise. Um, in in yeah. general, I, I was just going to tell tell the board. I think you, you don't. I think for now, for this questioning, you don't need to ask my per permission to speak. Just we're not stepping on each other's toes. So, <coughs> so Bob, <coughs> when you forward for capital projects for water and sewer, do our are our reserves sufficient for those? As you say, that there's no end in sight for the amount of projects that are needed in the future. Um, because if we talk about how much of the reserves to use to the rate, soften right. the blow, are we shooting ourselves in the foot long term um, by using the funds now? What, I, what I'm trying to, where yeah. I'm going towards is I want to make sure we don't hit a cliff where all of a sudden <coughs> the rates spike and there's massive projects. Because you're, you're obviously planning ahead, but it's a matter of how and when we use choose to distribute the reserves. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just like in any financial uh, enterprise, the more you take as an increase in the early years and the sooner you do it, the less impactful it will be on the future. So, you know, the board is always in a conundrum of how much do we do this year and how much do we rely on the future. Um, my, my only comment on reserves is they are well more than adequate at five million each for anything you want to do in the short run. Um, you can certainly plan on using half those just simply to use for rates over the next who knows how many years. That's a lot, though. Um, but the more you use in year one, hooks you on that in years two and three, unless you want to take a big increase. In well, are we at that place where we're going to talk about that? Or you're, um, it sounds I just like want to show to some, of the, to some of the debt and capital spending, if, if it's of interest. And just as a big picture, um, this is all the debt that we're going to be incurring in the future. This is not even on the table right now, but just to give you an idea, we are asking um, FinCom and then Town Meeting for four and a half million dollars on the Auburn tank that you know about, that's been yeah. well discussed. Right. What's less dis well discussed is, um, you know, 1.65 million each for water and sewer. Um, and then these two things down here, you know, somewhere around 30 to 35 million in today's dollars are not even planned for water meter um, water uh, main replacements, but it's out there. Out there meaning 20 25 years? 25 years? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That came up a while, that came up maybe four or five years ago in FinCom when it was sort of yeah. like we, lo we looked at our long-term <coughs> capo and water and sewer at that time, was a, th that number was 25 million. Right. And we stopped talking about it. Right. So <coughs> we started doing some of the work. Um, and both in water and then sewer stations are here. There's, I think, 12 sewer stations. Okay. Um, you know, we're partway through through that project also, but you can see a few more scheduled. Um, one of the reasons we stopped talking about it is because when we did that study and had those estimates and then went out to actually get bids, there was quite a surprise. Um, sewer stations especially were much more expensive than had been forecast because not a lot of people do sewer stations. And the construction market is obviously red hot right now. Um, so that's one of the reasons is I had imagined you could do all the sewer work in 15 years, sewer station work, and now realistically it's 25 to 30 years. 
So it's more logical to do that kind of maintenance, repair, and replacement during quiet periods in construction. I mean, you know, when everything's red line. hot, mm -hmm. you're not going to get anybody to come and do it for right. you know short money. Unless it breaks all the projects in the world. <laughs> yeah. So, and so I, and you know this will this too will change. It, yeah, it I, always I, does. I'd say the work we did, Charles Street, and, and those before, and the one after was most urgent. Yep, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Some of them were really, really urgent. Um, so yes, you know, planning in your uh, enterprise funds, especially, is a really long-term exercise, yep. and it's really important not to go ten years and just forget about things. Yeah, um, and to do things when you maybe can afford it. Maybe the construction market will have it. Uh, we may have waited a little too, too long in the last 20 years on some of the sewer stations. But to Vanessa's question, there's enough in there now to kind of anticipate the, the projects you just had on the... Um, sure. Okay. Yes, but again, what rate of reserve usage do you want to hook the rates on? Yep. Yep. You're going to use half a million every year. Probably not. Yeah, that, it'll take you through five, seven yeah. years. So, but, but Bob, I'm sorry, Andy, go yeah. ahead. I, so, Bob, the improvements that you showed in the capital plan mm -hmm. will be funded out of the capital plan, not out of these enterprise funds? No, though they're capital plans for the enterprise funds. For the enterprise yeah. funds. So they, they will, so it's enterprise not funds will take a hit. Parts of the right. rates, yep. Yeah, yep. Man, that's a bummer. So, so what I was meaning to ask you, Bob, is, yeah. um, I mean, correctly, you you know, you let us know that if you're using a half a million dollars of reserves, then you're using it. You know, we're not right. banking it. But that also doesn't take into consideration that there may be excess revenues that come in as well. So, Correct. I mean, you could, one could argue, for example, that there'll be greatly expanded usage over the course of the next year. One could argue that because there's a lot of units that are going to come on stream here and a lot of a lot more people living in those units and you know there'll be additional commercial going on stream as well um, so I guess you could argue that there may be unanticipated revenue gains right. that could offset some of the usage of the of now you know of the of the now because I got to tell you I mean you know one of the things that concerns me greatly um, as a board we have reduced, I mean, you have to look at at-risk um, people. We've reduced the senior tax relief. We've expanded um, business taxes. Um, we've decided not to offer senior or tax relief to small, bus to small businesses. Um, we have enacted an override. That's not the board, that's the citizens. And at the same time, We've had another year of record growth, therefore record assessment growth. Therefore, at some point, I'd love us to, to be able to look at the at the taxpayers in this town and say, okay, here's one that's not gonna go up. Actually, we did that last year. We year. did, we did, and I think it's something we need to consider again this year. Because a lot of the things that I've just mentioned could have a positive effect and I think we need to give them some breathing room. I mean, I don't know how far we are away. When's the next debt exclusion roll off? Three 2024. years? 2024. Yeah, three years, four years. Yeah. Four years. High school, 2024, uh, Libraries would, would end and Libraries library before that, I think, is no, after. after, a year so, after. Oh, so we're five years out? Yeah. Yeah. Five, that doesn't I mean, jump yeah. in. John, I, I share your concern and I have additional thoughts, but I know Bob still has more of the presentation to go through. Uh, no, I'm, I'm at the point where we can have our discussion. I, I just want to add that um, I have the flexibility here for you to back into <coughs> what rates, what reserves you want, if you want to tell me the rate. Um, Can you go back to the... Um, I will in a second. Okay. Uh, when, when we met in December as part of the budget meetings, I had indicating something in the order of 5%. Um, we got what I thought was surprisingly higher estimates out of uh, Fred, out of the MWA for <coughs> their costs, especially in water. Um, now it's around 6. Now, you can obviously do things to make it not 6. But I'm just saying, in, in general terms, with the amount of reserves we have, with the amount of growth we're likely to have, you're not going to be looking at zero that's affordable unless we stop doing some capital or cut it way back. Um, you're going to be looking more at the 5% over a longer period of time. I think the zero was a nice, a nice gift and a nice surprise. It, it, and it was. And 
you know, how much increased usage are you going to get from the stuff that's we know about that's in the ground? There's 9,000 houses. You know, we're not building 900. That's 10 percent. Might we see 5 percent? We might. I don't think you're going to be seeing, um, you know, unexpected revenue growth. From I don't think it's. I agree. It's not going to be explosive. Right. We'll see It'll an uptick. Definitely help sure. at the margin. Yeah. 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 Bob. Um, so let me let me make sure I understand. Get this straight. The the recommended reserve is about two and a half million for r roughly across the board. For, right. bo for, e for both. Each. Each. E each. Each. So each. Five altogether. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then we have about double. Right. And we have ten. And we have about twice that. Mm -hmm. Right. With projects mm -hmm. needed to be spent. Right. So um, what you're saying is is that if we I guess the citizens or residents could ask, well, you, you've got, your, your recommendation is five million, you're twice that, so why don't you pair it back down to five million and use, use the 10 to five million to, to subsidize the rate? Right. And you're saying the danger of that is that next year we might not be in the black for that, is that right? It's, this, it's the same thing we do during the budget. Yeah. You use free cash, but yep. then you're relying on free cash, and now you have no more free cash. Yeah. It's the same thing. Here. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, uh, just a sec, Mark. When we're done, um, you know, if you wanted to use a million bucks in each, just as an example, yeah, you would have a lower water rate on the same sewer rate. That gives you an order of magnitude. Yeah. Right. And could you afford a million next year? Absolutely, you could. Especially if we're going to go out of business, <laughs> and you'd have to worry about the second and third, fifth yeah. year, and tenth year right, right now. Right. Yeah. You definitely could. Right. Um, so it's really difficult. I, I just I, I know what the costs are going to be. Not all of them, but I know the capital costs. I know the work needed. I assume that those costs aren't going to decrease for the work needed. Um, I, I agree. There's going to be more water sold to some degree, but that's going to move slower than the capital costs. Um, so I'm just saying you should be cautious in how fast you use reserves. I'm not discouraging you from using them at all. There's plenty. Yeah, we've always um, used But them. if you use a number this year um, and you don't use it next year, you might be bumping rates 2, 3, 5 percent just because you didn't change your, or you change your reserve policy. It, it's and very similar to the uh, senior rate. Yeah. So, uh, we get it. Yeah, I, I, you know, public. it's an opinion, but right. yeah. I would rather pay for capital work than a change in your reserve policy in my water. Right. So, so Bob, Bob, at this, I'm sorry, at this point, um, if you're done with your yeah. presentation, um, um, I have storm water, but the basic message in storm water is no immediate change. Okay. Rates right. stay the same. So does it, we're gonna we're gonna deliberate this obviously yeah. uh, after the public hearing, uh, but do you have any more questions for Bob? Vanessa. Um, Bob, I know FinCom is going to be reviewing this tomorrow mm -hmm. evening, right? Um, it's from what you said earlier, it sounds like we're actually reviewing the, the rates sooner than has been done in previous years. Is that correct? No. No? Same. If no. Okay. Um, because I'd be interested in hearing what FinCom's take on this is as well, and we have one member of FinCom here, but I'd be interested in hearing from all of FinCom. Do we have FinCom doesn't set the rates. FinCom's never been part of this yeah. discussion. Doesn't no. mean they can't be, but. But no, 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 not necessarily, um, not specific, but not specifically in regards to the rate, but in the use of the reserves. Same comment. They've so never been you. part of that discussion. Again, doesn't mean they can't be. <coughs> I mean, it could be a theoretical discussion and be you know, to take up in the future, but I mean, it's not. Nice. Sometimes well, in, the, in the past, the board has set rates after town meeting finished. So the budget was passed and no one knew, gee, I wonder how many reserves you're going to use. That made it be a little difficult for town meeting to really understand. We've been doing it this right. way for the last four or five years. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I'm not opposed to that in the future. Um, but for tonight. So, so the one, I mean, yeah. the, the, the one thing that I think that um, we have to be careful about is that, as, as Bob suggested, this is not an exact science. We don't know how much we're going to use and we don't know how much we're going to spend. And trying to kind of be cute about how much reserves we use to try to minimize the impact of any one year's um, rate increase, I think what get, would, would get people kind of upset 
in terms of their own budgeting is when we have to sort of, when we have spikes of rates and then they go down and then they go up and they go down. It, you know, people can anticipate maybe small increases, but it's those large fluctuations because we're trying to cut it too fine. I think we have to be a little wary of, which I guess where I'm going with this, I'm arguing with maybe using a little bit less reserves um, so that, you know, we're not trying to give them a, a, a big rate decrease or the increase, you know, much smaller so that we avoid next year, you know, like, because, you know, we have a zero, right? That's great. But if it goes up to 10, 12% the next year, that's not great. So, you know, if we can try to kind of keep it <coughs> more level, I think should be the long-term policy of this board um, with the idea knowing that we're never going to get it exactly predicting usage and expenses. So, As a plan for application, Barrett, do you mean, so for this year, for setting the rates, you know, Bob laid out 25% increments. Um, yeah, can you? Can you? Yeah, keep on going back to that slide. Are these questions for Bob or are we, because I, I, I do want us to get to the public part of the hearing and then oh. we can deliberate. Okay. So, I'll, I'll uh, I, I thought, all right. Is this the one you? Yeah, that was I, I, I just want to reiterate that again, it's nothing's in a perfect science, but right now, right now, my best guess is a year from now, you have an intrinsic cost basis that's gone up two percent per year faster than right now. So right now, I told you the budgets are going up two something and eight something percent. So on average five. Uh, Next year they're going to be on average seven. So uh, I can already foresee you're going to need more reserves next year to just try to keep so some we semblance of order with. So when you rate. say use the 75 percent, um, you know, or, or I'm just thinking yeah. that as a number. That's your recommendation. Um, so how, how much reserves is that in terms of dollars? 475. Yeah, the quarters. Yeah. Uh, seven, almost 800. I honestly, I, I don't think you have a problem using a million or a million one combined. That would keep rates around the five area. I don't have a big, I don't see a big problem with that, but you're going to struggle next year if everything plays out as it does and there is a little more usage. Um, you're going to have a struggle to try to keep rates at five next year. So the question is kind of like the stormwater discussion we had last year. Do you want to raise them now or do you want to raise them a little more in a year? Right. Mm -hmm. It's no easy answer. So, so the 75% though represents Oh, I see. You got the number right there. Oh, Thank so you. oh, so you have to add those two together. So yeah, about so there's four, three so it's about fifty, and there's four twenty-five. So it's about so call it eight hundred. Okay. 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 Do and, we want to move to? So I, I have a, do have one more question for you, Bob. Okay. Yeah. As a point of clarification of what you just said. So if you went to the seventy-five percent, you raised it by five point three or five point seven. I forget which one of those two it is. What you're suggesting is that you already can forecast a larger growth next year. Yeah. So are you suggesting that we smooth it out so that it stays static year over year? Is that what you're well, suggesting? Well, I, I take Barry's point and, and some others that a predictable rate that doesn't jump all over the place is generally more interesting to people. Mm -hmm. um, and in that regard, I'm saying that if you have an appetite to use so many reserves, use more of them ne next year than this year. It's really kind of that simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're thinking maybe we could use a million two. Well, you reserves. always use more later because it's cheaper. <laughs> well, well, there's I, that too. I, honestly, I mean, that that's just, you know, yeah. that's fundamental yeah. finance. I mean, if you use more later, yeah. it's less expensive yeah. for a whole series of reasons when, you know, if you think about the economics of this. Yeah, man, um, I've just put two numbers up here just to see what it looked like if you use half a million in water. Your increase is four and a half percent. If you use six hundred thousand in sewer, you see a six percent. And so the blend go using a lot more. The blend will not be five; it'll be more than five. Um, it'll be closer to six. Uh, five point seven. Probably it'll be a little over five. And the blend of reserves is a million <coughs> one. I think you get into dangerous territory if you go too much above a million one combined, yep. given what the okay. future forecast is. Right. Cool. All right. Um, so I'll open it open it up to public comment um, and and I remind you to please state your name and address and um, to I think there's few enough people in the room that we don't need to limit it but be cognizant of the time thank you yeah uh, Mark Dr 110 Beaver Road two questions one is that um, you said that the ideal 
enterprise fund reserve number is around 2.4 million each. I'm wondering what that what is in that. Is that basically to cover disasters, emergencies? Yeah. Um, so if it's covering disasters, emergencies, if we were to try to forecast over a less than 25 year period the capital needs, the new sewer stations and other things, where should where would we say that the ideal number is? In that case, in other words, 2.4 million is emergency. How much more will we build in so that we can start doing some some of those other projects when the construction market comes down? That's yeah. What would tonight. yeah. Well, in theory, if if you wanted to live with whatever the cost of the construction was, you wouldn't need any more reserves. As long as you had two and a half, give or take, right. for emergencies in each, um, off you go. Use no reserves to set rates. Right. You wouldn't need them. And where was the source of the, the funding? Is it debt exclusions or the No, if, if the board was willing to not use any reserves mm -hmm. and set rates to 12 to 15 percent tonight, right. going forward, you'd, you'd, whatever the market rate is on the increase, if the you know, rates paid it, it'd be okay that you didn't have reserves if you didn't have them. Right. So in some sense, the 2.4 million is kind of an emergency number. And if you wanted to yeah. offer it toward future projects, you'd make it a bit higher than that. Maybe not a full five, but something maybe about yeah, two point four. We've we've kind of sort of played around with trying to match up those excess reserves to capital planning, and it definitely didn't exact science. So it, you know, I say two and a half for emergencies. I don't know what the number is, but add something else to help you buffer the rates for capital planning. Um, all of a sudden, um, you know, you're going you did some preliminary work. You thought you're going to start a project next year. It's going to take an extra year, but gee, that's when you wanted to do meters. So all of a sudden you're going to get a double hit in one year. So reserves do play a handy role in, in those kind of things. Um, and the and the two and a half million is really not a scientific number. You know, it's, it's the worst thing that possibly happened. I hate saying this. You know, were to happen in water or sewer, what would it cost? And you know, we just saw a half million dollar problem, and that was a really easy result for what could have happened in the circumstances we faced. It would have been much more expensive. Um, and if you don't have the reserves, you have to immediately go out to the ratepayers. And if you have to pay it over the last four months of the year, I don't even want to think what the rates would have to go to. And, you know, years before I got here, twice the board had to do mid-year increases because there weren't enough reserves. And there was an unanticipated change of some nature. Um, so I think it's really important to do a lot of planning in these because you can. If I could, second question, I'm sorry, I wasn't yes. directing to you, I'll direct to you. Um, yeah, sure. Um, in thinking about the numbers for kind of the, this notion of a million or a million one total that could be used out of the reserves, um, it sounds like that's kind of the max to kind of maintain that those 2.4s, knowing what's going to happen. But since we know, we anticipate there could be a 2% increase per year that follows, it might be prudent to not try to use that full mm -hmm. max number of 1.1. .1. You can pick a lower number yeah. just for consideration. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't like any of the options. I'll be be frank. Bill. Thank you. Uh, Bill Rob, 28 Mile Road. Uh, I like the rest of you. When my water bill got this wonderful thing that tells me to conserve and save money. Well, I did last year and it cost me money because I went down to the one, and I understand. Uh -huh. The minimum building is two. Mm -hmm. I like that on the water side. I think that's fair. But I don't think it's fair on the sewer side. Because now I'm paying twice, uh, pay $10.17 extra to the sewer. And I'm not putting it into the sewer. Yeah. Okay. And then the other favorite thing uh, Bob and I have discussed very often is the stormwater management. And by Supreme Court ruling, Massachusetts, it is a tax. That was down in the uh, town of Saugus uh, about eight, nine years ago. Uh, they found uh, three factors of uh, transfer tax. The party received a particular benefit for paying it. This is referred to as sewers down there. Mm -hmm. It was paid by choice, which unlocked. And it is meant to help government cover the expenses and not make revenue. And you are raising revenue by this. So by my feeling, by a Supreme Court ruling, it is not, the snowwater management fee is not the way. And I don't want to have to take it back to court, but I might have to. Hey, I see your point. I see your point, Bill. Um, it, 
and, and, and I think I think the board needs to think on that. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, we've gotten, yeah. we have, we've, I'm sure we've gotten advice from town council town on council, whether or not we're yeah. able to do this, and I'm sure we're able to or else we wouldn't, so I don't really see a need to labor, labor it now. Okay. All right. Any other comments from the public? Yes, Gina. Gina Snyder, um, I guess I wanted to understand a little better um, about how NWRA sets the charges for reading. I noticed that, that there, um, all the four years so communities, uh, <coughs> sort of the general increase in water sort of combined was 3.3%, and for Reading they listed 5.6%. So I wanted to see if somebody could answer why Reading is so much higher. And some communities actually had negative uh, water rate increases from the MWRA wholesale charges. Yeah, Bob. Is that last year or next year? It's That's the same answer. That's their proposal okay. for 2020. Um, we're buying more water. So it's not just the same amount of water, it's how much you're buying and what the change is. So, so it's the price of water and the amount of water combined. So my understanding was that one of the issues, and this gets to the second water meter, one of the issues uh, is that MRA has a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. So you're not just paying for O&M and the fact that water has to flow through the pipes, but you also have to apportion that debt right. to the communities based on their like, water. Like Deer Island and all that. There is yeah. some, some aspect of population that goes into uh, sewer rates as well. So to have people using more water is actually gonna cost everybody more money, but the ones using more water aren't really paying their full share for doing that. Um, the other issue I have, well, I have two other issues with um, second meters, and that's that the <coughs> Massachusetts updated their standards in 2012 to say that if you aren't, I know we're doing better than 65 gallons per person per day, and for that I really applaud the water department and all the work that's been done in town by volunteer groups and, and the conservation <coughs> programs that we have as well. Um, but that is, that's their limit, and um, it would be a real problem if outdoor water use started contributing to more than 65 gallons per person per day, which you might be encouraging by having second meters. And then in addition, in 2006, when the MWRA and the various state organizations allowed us to do the interbasin transfer that brought this vast quantity of water into Reading, conservation restrictions were imposed permanently, basically, as a condition of that. So I think it's a really bad idea, and against the spirit of that agreement, for us to then uh, implement a policy or program that basically does not encourage the conservation anymore. So I would like you to take that under consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Someone else, yes. Yeah, just, just one other <coughs> question. I, n n name and, well, and yeah, we'll finish if you want real estate. Um, Gina's comments certainly are, are apropos, and I agree with them. Um, the, uh, another issue with second meters is, is that the people that can afford second meters um, tend to have larger houses and need to water their lawns. And it has the effect of shifting the burden to, to people that are in apartments or condos that don't have that option of, of either you know, saving money like that. Um, and again, the, you know, we got a lot of fixed costs for the sewer infrastructure, and in a sense, that's taking um, money away from the maintenance of the, the sewer. And as I, I've heard tonight, but the sewer is certainly a big issue in terms of the capital um, funding. Um, so way back when the, the River Water Association did a um, contest to see who could 
was using the, the lowest amount of water you know, among their members. And that number was around 20 gallons per person per day. Um, so these are, that's an achievable um, goal, especially cons considering the, uh, all the new water saving um, devices that are on the market. Um, <coughs> And again, I reiterate that the fact that in terms of when we bought into the MWRA, the Indian Basin Transfer Act had requirements that we maintain our conservation ethos here. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you know a second water meter would just be in, in contrast um, to that. Too. And I also I noted Mr. Berman's uh, comment that. It's a social policy issue as much as anything else. And I think that's a very important thing to, to keep in mind. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, um, we have repeat customers. Bill. Yes, Dan. I didn't know you were going to be discussing the second water meter. Uh, I am just said against it. Yeah. Uh, if you've had the well, it isn't. <coughs> pleasure, if you will, of not having water, which I did in Tripoli, Libya, and they went, mixed the water and sewer line, I got to tell you, for about 10 days, it was not very pleasant. So if you can afford to water your lawn, pay for it. It's a privilege to have the water. That's a good point. Yeah. Yes. Oh, one other comment. Um, a number of nearby communities are doing tiered water rates, and I have actually suggested this historically, that Reading should consider that. And I really would like to see Reading consider emulating some of our nearby neighbors on doing the blocks for the tiered rates. I know it's a bit of a study, and it mm. takes a little more to put together <coughs> what the rate would be, but that would also uh, help with conservation and address the uh, capital uh, portion of uh, what the rate ends up being for those who use more. The idea of the tiered approach being if you're if you're below a certain usage, you have a, a lower rate than if you're in the. Um, As you start using more. Right. It the, go, rate the rate, that the rate goes up. Yeah. Higher. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Dan and then Vanessa. Oh. I'm sorry. We're still in the public. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Any other um, public comment before we close the public hearing? Seeing none, Vanessa. Uh, move the board close the hearing regarding the uh, water, sewer, and stormwater uh, rate. Discussion. Seeing none. Oh, did someone second, second. that? Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Seeing none. All in favor? Five zero. Okay, now uh, we move on to the uh, our, our the board discussion about and, and and Bob, it would be most helpful for me, and I don't know how the rest of the board feels if you bring up that slide of our yeah. sort of options yeah. of. Uh, <coughs> now is that helpful for the board yeah. to center on this discussion? I'm looking at 75% personally. Okay. I don't know if anyone else is. All right. So we have 75 for both now. Yeah. Barry. So I was I like the idea of doing the 75% until I looked at the other slide, which is the water and sewer rates combined over time. Um, and if we're at 75% on both, that's almost, let's call it an 8% increase. Yeah. Um, and if you look at, I mean, I have it on my screen here, but there. Uh, no, it's the it's the um, uh, it's the it's the one that's it's actually the one after the the next one. On this, yeah. PowerPoint. Yeah. There we go. So if we do that, we're we're at we're at eight percent increase. And if you look at just over the last few years, we've gone from a zero, just going backwards, zero. 3.35, 7.1, 2.3, 4.1 would be the biggest increase in seven years, which basically is the opposite of what I thought, what, what my personal goal would be is to sort of try to keep those increases within a much smaller band. So 
I would like to perhaps look at using, because we are gonna be selling more water by hook or by crook, maybe using 100% of what we used last year for mitigating water and maybe keeping 75% of the sewer. My guess that makes it the combined maybe six something. So this one here yeah. and this one here. Uh, yeah, you're six and a half-ish. Yeah, so yeah, it's, I'm okay with it. it's a little, it, you know, it, it's still a lot <coughs> higher um, than the zero and a lot higher than, you know, some of the um, past years. But at least it's going to be consistent with kind of the usage, right? We're going to be we're going to be selling more water, and we're still respecting the fact that we are going to keep money and you know keep those reserves high for the capital projects that we need. There so that's where I would repeat yeah. what your suggestion was, since they were different. So using what we used last year for water for water, so 100 percent. Um, so that's I that's guess that's 550,000. Yeah, so it's um, a 3.7 percent increase. Right. Yeah. And then on the sewer, doing the 75%. That's 11.19. That's a 10. 10. Yeah, yeah $11.19. Right. So combined, it's five. It's about what, 900, right? 550 and 350? 6.7, 6.8. Right, so it's a 6.8 yeah, right. increase. And then this way, it's, you know, it's, it's basically helping a little bit on some of the smoothing out the rate, also recognizing the fact that we're gonna sell more water. Um, Bob, what's the minimums you're looking at here? Um, double the rate. Oh, okay. So if it's 1119, it's 2238. So I don't know what that means in terms of like what the, com well, what the combined rate would be on that. You'd have to, because it's not across the chart, you'd have to. No, it's, it's like six and a half, six point yeah. seven, somewhere in that area. And, and it's still less than a million dollars of reserves yes. combined. Which it's I nine, think you said. 900. Yeah, thousand. over 1.1. We should really be nervous, and this is a little under one, so it kind of keeps with that conservative, conservative budgeting model, but also there's a little bit more of a softening in the rate. Dan. Your recommendation on stormwater rate? Same. Which is? Um, $60. 60 That's a flat fee, right? Yeah. Nope. So, Barrett, I like where you're going with when this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, I like where you're going as far as evening it out. You know, I think, uh, Bob, can you go back to the previous one, please? This one? Yeah, thank you. Um, as far as trying to level it out, because it is a little unpredictable, um, I'd recommend doing something maybe a 90 water, 80 sewer, so that we're still, so that sewer's not seeing quite as big a jump and we're still going in a direction which is decreasing. Not 90. So 90% for water and 80% for sewer. I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but I'm, I'm trying to find sort of a, a compromise in between the two. So we like decrease water from your proposal and increase sewer. So, yeah, I, so, um, Bob, you're suggesting that um, the usage of 1.1 million will leave the capital account in a reasonable condition. That is to say that it's unlikely we'd be doing damage to our capital position. Is that essentially what you said? Correct. Then, frankly, for me, if we don't use the million one, I'm not voting for it. I want to use the million one and use it, you know, in an apportioned way to be determined whether it's, you know, split so that one is is not a spiker and the other one a blunter, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but personally, I think that I think that the taxpayers in this town um, are a bit hit very hard in the last year and there's another year of that coming and if i don't want to damage our capital position um i trust bob's judgment implicitly relative to his estimate of 1.1 so for me if we're not going to use that whole point 1.1 i can't support it and how we split it is immaterial to me 
be nice to. So, you know, I agree with you. John, I also heard Bob say that if we have to decide whether we use a little more or a little less this year or next year, that we consider next year possibly using a little bit more. So, because of the anticipated changes. So, if we use on the order of 900,000 or so this year, it gives us a little bit more breathing room next year without then having to increase it above the 1.1. Because that's, you know, that, that, that's the same discussion we have with free cash, um, which is that each year you need to add a little bit more to reach the same place. So this year, if we keep it a little under, next year we have more breathing room. Well, you, you know, and I respect what you're saying, Vanessa, and to say that we get a little more breathing room is fine, but I personally, we're talking about a difference of two hundred thousand dollars spread across, you know, a ten million dollar, you know, capital plan, and I say, let's give the ratepayers and the taxpayers a little bit of room, and that's just kind of where I'm coming from on it. I, I, you know, I understand right exactly what you're saying, and I'm not sitting here beating on the table. I'm just telling you, philosophically speaking, I. I I think people. I think our taxpayers and ratepayers are getting hit pretty hard, and have been, and will continue to be. And if we can operate a rate on both sides of that, um, and I think it does make some sense to not dump dump it all on the sewer. I think it really makes a lot of sense to blend that in an appropriate way. I'm for one for one vote. I, I think we should maximize the savings and protection to the ratepayer and the taxpayer. That's just kind of where I'm coming from. Um, Andy, do you have? I do. Um, so. Should somebody make a motion? Well, I, I, I'd just like to say a few, few words. I, I, I sort of fall into, I think, where the board is going on this. Um, but to, to me, it, it's a question of get, giving the taxpayer some relief. It's, you know, we, for the reasons John elucidated, I don't need to repeat them. Um, on the other hand, having uh, greater reserves allows us to invest uh, in, in our infrastructure for the future, helping future residents, uh, future generations. So that part of me wants to, uh, wants to say, let's just pour this money in, in, into um, upgra upgrading our v more than 100-year-old systems. Uh, that said, I don't think we can, we can do that to the taxpayers. So those are my thoughts. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Before we move to the motion, because we haven't really settled on a number yeah, yet. It's probably, you know what, it, no, before no. we make the motion, I think probably would it, it, it's probably best if we can kind of circle around the number, and then we can That's apportion. Yeah, apportion. I need so, actual numbers for a motion, and we don't have one. Yeah, so, I mean, just like how much, right, how much do right. we want to so, reserve so, we want to use? So, I mean. Bob, <laughs> what what table does everyone want to see up there? I like to see the table where you have, they have both sides. I just work in these columns, because then I can That's do that. Lots of things right. yeah. You can't see that, but okay. No, all right. I can make it a little bit. Well, let's, so, uh, can I make suggestions? Oh, that's how good. Barry, Ooh, you had mentioned the 100% for water and the 75% right. for sewer. Which is 900,000. Which is about, it's, uh, I think it's 900. 970. Oh, it is? 970. Oh, wow. Um, so, I... 870. Hmm? Oh, my, I, no, I trust no. you. My math's so, Well, it's 550 and 420. Unless I look to the charts right now. What was your second number? 75% or 80% of? 75. Of four, I don't know what 75% of 475. 75% of, 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 oh, you're right. Sewer or, sorry. Of, sorry. My bad. Right, for okay. sewer. That's 8.8, so right? 350, more or less. 425 is what you have in your chart. <coughs> so, and I had suggested, um, say, 90 for water and 80 for sewer, but we don't have a magical chart for that, so I don't know what those numbers are. 
just as a way of decreasing water as well and making a hit not quite so big on the sewer side. Can I just ask again? I thought Barry and Dan had been at um, 550 for water, which is the same, 100 percent, more or less. Yeah. Yep. And then at 350 for sewer. Oh, excuse me. Which is 75 percent. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was right. So if if that's true. So 550. What? <laughs> Wait. You're looking at 3.7% three, on water and 10% on sewer, and based on the things you the just said. What's the spend reserves total? Um, the total it's of 900,000. Yeah. 550 and 350. <coughs> and that's a 6. I don't know, 7, 8% combined. So that is using, the, I just want to be clear, that's using the same increase for the water rates, holding that at 3.7, and then going to a, what was the percentage in for sewer? 50,000 of reserves, which is more or less three quarters. Yeah, 75. That, but that gives you a 10% increase on sewer Wait, no, rates. Vanessa is right. No, but, but well, it says here, 75% is 425, is 8.8% .8 increase. So it's a 5F8. Uh, Where are you? Um, in the packet over the weekend, there was two mistakes if you're looking at the packet over the weekend. I'm looking at the Thursday packet. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I don't know what packet. <laughs> so I'm looking at the the one that has I might have the wrong one. Okay. no reserves, 50 water, sewer combined. It shows right, so right here, um, you just numbers, suggested 350, 75 percent. Yeah. I can make it look bigger. Oh, okay, I'm okay. I got wrong numbers then. I, I do too. And that's 10 percent increase on rates. Okay. Oh boy, okay. so do I. Okay, so, so that's using 350,000 of reserve and then 550 on the sewer okay. side, 350 but of reserves. Yeah, right. Is and how much water that. reserves? Uh, 550 for a total of. And that's a six and three quarters percent combined increase. Um, and in order to do the calculation, using that a million one drives it down to six, or maybe just a tiny bit below. Yeah, that's that's what your difference. That is, is. Where, you know, that's the delta between. Yeah. So really, where, like where I am, nine hundred versus one point one. Really. Right. It's yes. Like, yeah. Two hundred thousand dollars, <coughs> which so is a rounding error when we think about town budgets and so forth. But it's not a rounding error in a household. I will tell you that. I think you're in general agreement on water. Okay. I think. So I, I'm fine with this. If we keep the, you know, for the safe, sake of expediency, if we keep water at 100%, take sewer down to 75, mm -hmm. what do, can you confirm, Bob, what the rates would be? The uh, sewer rate would be eleven dollars and nineteen cents, yep. ten percent increase. Eleven nineteen, and what did you say? And for sewer? That's that's sewer. Oh, that's that's going, going backwards. Water is uh, ten dollars and thirty-seven cents, a three point seven percent increase. Ten dollars and thirty-seven. That's by using five hundred fifty thousand. Right. And the combined increase is. And uh, sewer using three fifty is eleven nineteen, eleven dollars nineteen cents, a ten percent increase. So overall, and the combo becomes, is about 6.8 percent combined. And if we go to, and if we use what John is suggesting at 1.1, it goes to from 6.8 to 5.7. Well, let me just put so it all in sewer. Because right? right. it's like, yeah. if you, if you agree on water at the 3.7 percent increase, which seems reasonable, and you're really just discussing the sewer. Uh, John's suggestion would increase sewer rates just under seven and supposed to ten percent. So a combined difference of one and a half percent, more or less. Yeah. I and what would the actual blended increase yeah, yes, be? Yeah. So Five point nine, roughly. Uh, less. Five point seven. No, because yeah, it's 5. about a percent 3. difference. Five point three. Yeah. I, I think that's yeah. substantial for a homeowner. I, that's, you know, I'm, I'm frankly, I, and I'm not trying to be difficult, but I'm stuck in the mud. And what's, um, uh, what does the change do from 1119 if we go with that plan? The combined rate? Yeah. Uh, 6.8. No, no, no. What, what do we put on the sewer rate to get that? Um, 350,000. And what's the rate for 1119? That's what we have. 
Um, that's what you would have. You're at 1017 right now. Right. 1017 is at 75 percent. 1017 is today's rate. Yeah. And Dan was asking what is next. 1017 is my right. question. Okay. Yeah. Keep it today. So I, I'm comfortable moving with the 75 percent for sewer and the 100 percent for water. And that total, Bob, is 1.1. It's 900,000 reserves and a combined rate around 6.8 percent, much more, much more. All right, so we're really like there's a, there's sort of a there's there's 900,000 on the table. There's a million one on the table. Yeah. We'll, we'll, let's just let's do a million. Let's just do a million. I mean, we're <coughs> I mean, it's it's really at the end. That, but you know, the the reason I'm leaning more towards 900,000 is not to split hairs but to get us going in the right direction which is to decrease our dependency on reserves especially knowing the quantity of capital projects that we have on the horizon no i mean i i, I agree with that but i think and then next year again it goes to next year being able to not hit people as hard with such a with a massive increase potentially This is the three numbers you're discussing. Um, a 10% increase is a few members' positions. 6.9 is John's, and 8.5 is split in the middle. For the water for the, for increase the, going up to 3.7. Oh, okay, so keeping the water at that level. And then. Bob, can you clarify those three on the right? Is that 100%, 75%, and something in between? Um, no. It's 1,000,001, 900,000 or a million. I mean, in other words, this number here is 900,000. <coughs> here's a million, here's a million one in reserves. Fixing the water at 550,000 and just putting all your difference of opinion on sewer. On sewer. So it's 9.1 and 1. See, then the it's 900,000. Um, I put them out of order, but 1.1 in the middle and then a, a compromise, if you will, to the far right hand side. So the far right hand side is an 8. That, that's a million, 550. But that's on the soup, but what's the combined? 6.1. Six 6.1 point one if we do a million? Instead of 6.8. 6.1 if we do a Or instead of 5.3. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm comfortable in the middle. All right, so. Okay. So that's a 3.7 in the water and a 8.5 in sewer. Okay. All right, so it's 1037 per 100 cubic, correct? Right. And then uh, with 11 a, with a minute. And what's the sewer? 1103. What was that? $11.03. Okay, I'm prepared to make a motion. I, I have it here. Do you? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, then for the minimums, it's double. Using that number, those numbers. Yeah. All right. So that. I just I'm going to say it one more time. The water rate is at 1037. Yep. And the sewer rate is at 1103. Right. And you double each of those for the minimum. Say that again. Yeah. Double each of those to get to the minimum number. Minimum quarter. So minimum quarterly. 2074 on water and 2206 on sewer. Oh, is there a minimum if you like if you don't use a lot of water? Yeah. Oh, but the minimums aren't listed here in the motion. You have to no. fill them in. Yeah. That's the minimum. Oh, shoot. Uh, okay. okay. Um, say that to me again, Bob. Water is the minimum? Uh, water, water. 20, water. $20.74. $20.74. No. $20 oh, Sewer is $22.06. Okay. Go. All right. Um, and the storm water rate stays at 60? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Great. Uh, am I reading them all at once, or do you want to do the piece now? No, we do the whole thing. Okay. Move to set the fiscal year 2020 water rate at 1037 per 100 cubic feet with a minimum quarterly bill of 2074, effective with the December 2019 billing. Move to set the fiscal year 2020 sewer rate at 1103 per 100 cubic feet with a minimum quarterly bill of 2206, effective with the December 2019 billing. Move to set the stormwater rate at 60 per unit, uh, 3210 square feet per year to be billed quarterly, effective with the December 2019 <coughs> billing. Second. Discussion. No, John. 
Um, the, the motion that's on the table represents how much of the reserves being used total. That's a million. A million dollars. Okay. I, I just point out that by not utilizing the full maximum that we were advised would not put us in trouble. Um, we add a hundred thousand dollars to a ten million dollar reserve at the risk of adding a percent or more to our ratepayers and our taxpayers of their overall bill. I, I just think it's I, I think it's silly and I can't I cannot support it. Can you explain you said at the risk of um, Bob has said very clearly right. that by spending 1.1 million, yes, that we do not risk our future capital accounts. Yes, that we are maintaining ourselves in a in an area that is continues to be reasonably conservative. Can I use that word? I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, Bob. I think that's fair. Okay. Um, so, for me, um, I'm. I'm suggesting that we should pass that kind of savings through. I mean, we see this example at FinCom year after year. Okay, I mean, reserves are reserves are in excess of um, what their stated norms are. So they spend down some of those reserves. Yeah. Our reserves are in excess of in this particular thing, in excess of what's net what's needed, and so. Spending down some of that as long as you don't go into dangerous territory I, I'm not a big one for spending rainy day accounts because that's what we're really talking about you guys have heard me talk about that over time but prudent um, spending to Protect our citizens as best we can and you know honestly the people at greatest risk are those who have been hit the hardest over the course of the last year. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be unreasonable with right. anybody here. I'm just feeling very strongly about this. So I just want to make a comment. Is it correct that we're dealing with a difference of spending down uh, 1.1 1 million, 1 .1 million versus 1 million? Yes, it's a hundred thousand. It's a hundred thousand dollars yes. that we're that we're that the, disagreeing on here. A hundred thousand that the town would save rather than be passed through to the taxpayer. Right. Yes. We're, we're keeping in, keeping in reserve for, yeah. for yeah. 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 the future. So so it's that's where the difference is. Yes, yes. that is where the Vanessa. difference is. I mean, I, John, I, I hear your point. I'm also I also heard the town manager say that we have expenses on the horizon, and so part of being fiscally prudent is looking out for the future of our spending needs as well as our current and most immediate needs. And I think this is a compromise between those two um, parts that Bob has put before us. So just so in my and in my interpretation the 1.1 is the maximum. He has not said that we should go there. He has said that next year we could have additional financial demands. So in my mind, we're trying to split the difference between what is needed now and what will be needed next year, and what we know is likely to happen next year. I mean, I, I, Barry, I, yes. I mean, I heard him, I heard him, he's sitting right here. Right, he's, he can hear, um, he's yeah. here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't mean to be rude. That's all right. Um, <laughs> I heard the, the town manager, when, when he put this together, that he was sort of hoping that we would go use 75 percent of of uh, what we used last year, both in water and sewer, which would have been, I think, in the eights, maybe seven fifty or eight. I, I wouldn't say I was hoping. Well, you I were was illustrating. You were. You were. My, my only hope is that you didn't try to use more than a million one. Right. <coughs> but I mean, you chose to illustrate it with that point. So I mean, I, that that's that's kind of what I heard. And the other thing I heard loud and clear was sort of the uncertainty. Well, the certainty 
of a lot of these projects down the road and the, and the higher expenses that are associated with them. So, you know, why I kind of sort of fell in the middle is because I do, John, believe, I mean, I, I think you make a valid point. We should try to pass on this as much of the savings as we possibly can, but also try to mitigate those spikes, you know. And again, we, we were at zero last year, which is a great thing. So anything that we were going to do above that was going to be above zero and it was going to be an, in, it was going to be an increase. So, you know, my idea of going to the million is is kind of you know kind of mitigate those spikes, use as much as we can, but be mindful that um, down the road we could be having these huge expenses that would force much much bigger increases. So that's why I was kind of comfortable. I mean, the hundred. I mean, we probably spent a lot more time on this hundred thousand dollars than we needed to, but I think it's it's sort of important to kind of notate sort of you know where the where the um, emphasis you know kind of was in the thinking. May I recommend that we vote? Votes vote. Yeah, okay. Um, so, her motion. Yeah, all in favor of uh, Vanessa's motion. All, uh, not all opposed. Ready to roll. We have a new rate. We have a new rate. Um, I need to. We don't have to be even all the yeah, time. Right. I need to put it too. It's okay. Well, we can never be even. <laughs> yeah, I, it, I, it was hoping that we, we could yeah. somehow come together, but uh, you know. Okay. Five I'll, minutes. Right. Five minute break. Yeah. Okay. Take over. Okay. Thank you for coming. Okay. Yeah.
Yes, there's... my wife. I did it as a joke <laughs> one year. You're the and one. she got a letter from the town clerk saying, congratulations on being voted. It, it she might... made me write the letter immediately and not even mail it, walk it to I me. got a feeling it's a sta <laughs> state, uh, I think some Disney characters state requirement. So, <laughs> ready with a notice? So, yeah, the... Notice, notice. The, yeah, um, please, please read the notice. What? <laughs> we have a hearing. The hearing. Oh. Right. Oh, uh, hearing. <coughs> Sorry, give me a sec. Here. Oh, no, the hearing no, is... No, I need to read the hearing notice, yeah. and I... Closed I just that. closed mine. Yeah. yeah. I got it. I'll get it, too, probably the same time as you do. Okay. Please take notice that the Select Board of the Town of Reading will hold a series of public hearings on March 12, 2019 in the Select Board's meeting room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass., uh, to amend the Select Board policies, Article 1, Operating Procedures, and Article 2, Boards, Committees, Commissions, beginning at 8 p.m. Okay, uh, correction. Or 10. Or 10. Or 10. Yes. Correction, that originally was a series of hearings. It is a single hearing, if you could correct the record. Um, the, um, oh, you can't change it to no, okay. three that okay. were tonight. All right. yeah. So, Dan, okay. so it's okay. you have a single hearing. Okay. Dan, before you before you begin, I would like Dan uh, for Dan to be able to get through his presentation. Yep. I'll get it. I'll so, go given the time and we have yep. some appointments to make, and I'd like to spend just a few minutes on the next agenda, if the board would be willing to hold their questions so Dan can get through. The document. Right. Yep. This, this started okay. This started as a gallbladder operation. The patient was opened up to, to uh, revise the volunteer section. Uh, patient was open and uh, kidney stones were discovered. So we added some Robert's rules and the uh, changed the order of the agenda. Ray got hold of it and discovered a hernia in the patient. So we, so we made some additional changes in uh, one one one, which uh, is right before you. The operation now, right? was successful, but the patient died. The patient is about to be sewn up. I hope. So. Uh, Ray uh, pointed out, actually, we were going to leave the uh, reorganization, uh, the officer's election on the select board, uh, to the current bylaw of June, date of June. Current uh, policy. Yes, current policy. Right. Uh, Ray pointed out that in, in none of his uh, towns that he serves is that done, uh, that they, they reorgan April in all those towns. Uh, we had discussed this in the subcommittee because it, it actually does dovetail better to, to do the reorg in April along with the appointment of the uh, liaisons and uh, the assignment of other you know, things, VASC, et cetera. So uh, Ray's suggestion is April, and that's, that's what's in the main motion tonight. So uh, we'll, we'll get to uh, voting in amendments or anything in a little while here. So let me just summarize what we're changing here. This is just really kind of wordsmithing here uh, and pr preside over select boards meeting approve agenda in consultation with the town manager has been added by Ray. Uh, by me. By you, I'm sorry. That's purple, I got the wrong color. Yeah. Oh. And, and you, did, you did add that. In April following the NOT. So we're also uh, setting liaison assignments in April or at other times where necessary if a liaison resigns or, or needs to be replaced. Uh, we added two other things here. Uh, we, we did take out this uh, continuity language up here, but we did add uh, prepare and deliver the annual state of the town address. Now, I, I think that could be the new chair, or it could be a combination of the prior chair and the new chair. The prior, and he, the prior chair will still be around because we're keeping the provision that uh, we don't have a select board member service chair in their final year. That's why we're keeping that provision. So you are going to have continuity there, and they can share that responsibility. And then we also added number seven which is the statutory uh, responsibility to sit on the appointment committees for those groups. Select, Board of Selectmen to select board throughout the document, including one, four, and any of the years we otherwise didn't make any changes to. Uh, let's see. And this is just, uh, okay. Liaisons will be established uh, in April uh, or, uh, or May 1st, whichever is later, and they will serve to the following April 30th. <coughs> Here's where we, we've kind of uh, made this, the uh, order of the agenda match our practice. 
we have moved proclamations and certificates to the very top so we don't keep the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and whoever waiting. Then we'll go to reports and comments in, in the order that we've agreed on. Uh, select board, town manager, public comment, open session. Then we'll put meeting minutes after that. Uh, and we did that practice tonight, so we're already starting that. It, it's a good practice. We'll, we'll get through the minutes. And the rest is the conventional order. Uh, let's see. We just changed a little language here about avoiding personnel is uh, avoiding make, making disparaging comments about individuals is better language. Uh, there was a question from one of Ray's staffers here about this quorum rule, but I uh, let's let's jump to one two seven. Uh, th there was some discussion uh, in a subsequent board meeting about you know it might be a good idea to have in my suggestion a, a sort of a glossary <coughs> of a Roberts rules of the most commonly used things we do here, just to avoid uh, confusion. And this is taken patterned exactly after what's in the bylaws for town meeting. Uh, you'll see the exact same structure there. Uh, all we're saying here is uh, you have to count the total number of board members in the charter and take a majority of that number. That's the quorum for doing business and the threshold for passing uh, any uh, motions. Uh, some motions actually <coughs> super majority, but in most cases we put language into for that. I, I don't think that's a, that's a question. It's not a prohibition of en enacting that. I, th I think the language is fine. Can I just ask did a you, question? Did you, yeah, sure. I think, it, I think the comment refers to the section 3.2. Oh, and I okay. I think if you scratch sure. 3.2 and just as defined in the right form of the charter, you're Okay, fine. that's fine. Okay, I'm happy to do that. So that, can that uh, who seconded? Who's the seconder? There's yeah, always no seconder. We're just talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're not doing markers. You're just, we're just, we're just, just, you're just yep. keep presenting. We'll keep presenting. Yep. Keep track. Okay. <laughs> uh, now we're talking uh, board to board communications, avoid disparaging comments before we were talking about public comment. Mm -hmm. And this rule seven is just a uh, reorg of the, uh, uh, you have to avoid f having a financial interest, better language expressing that uh, for any matter coming before the board. Uh, recusal may be in order. Uh, rule eight, all, bo all board votes taken by a show of hands, we'll roll call vote recorded in the minutes. Rule 9 is right out of the uh, bylaw, but Ray made some changes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Rule 10 are really, I, I think, the meat of what we do in meetings, uh, and it gives a precedence of motions and when, when they'll be, uh, which motion has, pre like, you can move to adjourn any time in the meeting, basically, except during a vote, I guess, or an election of officers. Uh, lay on the table is not debatable, that's just for the duration of the meeting. You can make a motion to take from the table. You can uh, postpone for a time certain, send it back to the Board of Health for study, the pesticide regulations, that kind of thing, uh, et cetera. Oh, that, that's to commit for further study, excuse me. Uh, postponing to a time certain brings a matter back before the Board uh, on a particular meeting. So that, that's a good way, it, it, instead of tabling, if you really want to take it up again in the future, that's what you do. So I think this is pretty straightforward. Um, and certain motions are not debatable, and those are laid out in Rule 11. I, I agreed with Ray, Rule 12 is a little complex and seldom used, so let's, let's take the confusion out. Let's take that. Okay, we go to 1-3, more select board changes. There's not a lot here, except I think we put under operations a uh, hook ahead to the code of conduct, so we yes. prefer this, this section is about the, vote, the select board. So we, the, the code of conduct is actually in the, sec, the article that pertains to volunteers. So we made sure people know that this is applicable, this particular part of the code of conduct. Go we'll look there. There's some specific parts of that that apply to the board. We didn't touch one for except to change the select board language, and the rest of it, I think, was untouched in uh, article one. Okay. Uh, let me go through two briefly. This one, uh, we oh, simply so we, did you do one five? Oh, you crossed off one five. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't do one five yet. Oh, but I think no, that's we, we did change out. one five. Good, good. No. Yep. I'm sorry. One five is the uh, the whole language on the mask. Yeah. We changed that completely. Yep. I skipped that over. Sorry. Yep. Uh, it was just simpler to strike the prior language. You put new language in, so that's what we did. Uh, although it does borrow some of the, the preamble. Uh, 
I'll highlight some of the changes here. Uh, first of all, we're uh, Ray suggested the language that VASC members be, we, we were going to say hey, you have one, one year and a two year and then you go back to two years. This is a little more elegant. Appointed for a staggered two years terms range so that one term expires on April 30th each year. So the, the whole VASC doesn't expire at once. That was yep. actually the old way. Uh, no member of the select board will serve more than two terms, but uh, precedence will be given when that person re-ups to a new person who, who wants to serve. That, that's the suggestion to the board here. Okay. Um, and then we go through the, pro the two processes, one for annual appointment, uh, which is a little lengthier. So uh, we, we did want to keep the, uh, May 1st should be back in there. It is. Okay. <coughs> Be beginning May 1st, that's the time when invitations get sent out and, and notices get posted by staff for all vacancies, both associate and full, that are expiring on July 1st. So we're expecting those responses back and the expiration of the uh, uh, advertising is around that same time, May 15th. So we're suggesting that VASC meetings be set up between May 16th and June 15th, a minimum of six, uh, on different days of the week to accommodate as many people as we can. Um, we are going to, as the policy now, now invite all incumbents, that was not the prior policy, uh, seeking reappointment. And we are attempting to queue in the board committee chairs so that they may attend an appropriate meeting. Uh, now, Ray and I, we had a little bit of a divergence of opinion about the notice. Uh, we were suggesting He's, he is saying, I think, that anybody who's being interviewed should really be on the agenda, yeah. which would preclude any last-minute changes, which is something we have been doing. Um, yeah. And then that if... That uh, more for accommodation of the schedule. Right. Mm -hmm. That's no. a tough issue. It is a tough issue, but we, you, you could take it under the 48-hour rule. His preference would be if they can be interviewed. Yeah. They come in in that 48 hours, they'd be interviewed in a subsequent VASC meeting. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, you, you should only interview someone who's not on agenda if it's really urgent. Yeah. You're running out of time, right. there's some reason why, look, we just, just like unanticipated things that come before you, it's really something we just have to do. <clears throat> well, this, the, I think the verbiage here just talks about how they're going to notify the board and committee chairs. So I don't think that's a problem. No. So we so. can leave that and not, not use the 48 hours prior. But we'll, I think the direction the staff is to try to get yeah, I think your language is fine we just have to understand okay. how to behave yep if we do and then uh, the copy of the interview packet will, will be trans will be sent to the select board all candidates and committee chairs uh, VASC will vote a slate of candidates for the annual um, reappointments and this is old language the consent item stuff was in there before any member of the select board or any candidate may ask for recommendation to be removed that they be taken off the slate, separately interviewed, or just withdraw. And any, yeah, they will, the candidate can be separately uh, interviewed by the select board. That has not really happened in practice, but it's something we have. And during the year, uh, we just say within five days of a vacancy, uh, we post the complete uh, listing of vacancies. It's usually just a single position. Uh, we invite all associate members of the affected board to apply. Uh, they don't need to necessarily be interviewed, but they're always invited to come in just because they're effectively incumbents. Um, and then uh, the vast chair in the town meeting, uh, town manager's office will schedule, they'll work with the chair to schedule one or more dates. We'll leave that kind of open to ask interviews, and we'll make every effort to uh, accommodate folks. And the requirements up above of 1524 and 29 are still applicable here. So, all right, that completes one. Thanks, Barry. Can I just interject? Yep. Sure. Um, so whoever makes the motion, um, I'd ask a friendly <coughs> amendment to be made. I went through this and found just six instances where, for instance, um, it says the word select men still. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing, but you correct me. Well, what do we want, want to say? Select board members. And then if there's a couple instances of chairman and that just say chair. Mm -hmm. So if a friendly amendment can accept those kind of changes, that'd be helpful. Okay. And uh, then I'll have Caitlin look yep. through and really find how many there are. Okay, okay. Uh, I think we can, uh, who's the secretary again? We didn't do it. Okay. We haven't made a motion yet. Here we go, so, yeah. so Let's get before we yeah. proceed to the motion, we're not. Um, 
I'm going to do the hearing. Yes. Oh, that? Yeah. Um, so are we still moving forward with the hearing? You're still presenting? I'm, I'm going, I'm doing okay. my presentation on two now. Okay. Uh, we're doing this all as a one? Yeah. As a one No, side. there'll be two different motions. Uh, do you want to have discussion separate? I Actually, no, maybe let's, let's two, two. I think two is important to go through because some yeah, of I the timing is. issues yeah. impact. Okay. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Um, no, you're doing a great job. <laughs> All right. All right. Since you, uh, you re Andy did a, a pretty good job rewriting this stuff here. Yeah. He, he actually went through, uh, combed through the bylaws, the charter, and looked for places where we could slim down the language here. Uh, a lot of what we're doing here, instead of repeating things that are in those two documents, we're simply making references. But the agreement, the tacit agreement is that uh, the actual language might be cast into some kind of a handbook for new selectmen and onboarding mm -hmm. document. But in terms of a policy, you don't want that stuff here. Okay, uh, general provisions, let's see. Yeah, most of that stuff's crossed out. Yeah. Right? It is, uh, remember, we just simply abbreviated it this way, uh, where procedures regarding meetings, rules and minutes, voting quorum, you want to know anything about that, go to section 88 of the charter, go to section 331 of the bylaws to know about this stuff. So we're on to now. Yeah. Yes, we're on to. Yeah. Remote participation, the language is necessary because that is not actually in our bylaws or charter. I, th I think I'm right on that. That's correct. So we do need to spell out all the references to state law. Uh, um, if, if I could in interrupt, yep. I, there is, a, I did write a small intro. Yes, you did. Um, to okay. this, uh, the idea right being here. sort of giving a heads up to the volunteers what their responsibilities are. Yep. So. In order to learn the responsibilities, volunteers are encouraged to use this list as a reference guide. Yeah. Okay, so we have remote. Uh, that just Wait lays up. all that out. Ray wordsmithed it. More references. Here's the code of conduct. So the is important that two point two. Two point two. Uh, each member of the select board, as well as every board and committee member, we're shortening BCC to BC because that's the the charter way of saying it. What's BCC anyway? Board, board committee, board committee commission, commission. But we really don't appoint commissions. Uh, okay. Well, we well. just changed the legal reference to just two right. instead of three. Right. Okay. <coughs> and this so, used just to apply to volunteers. Now it correct to us. As Sections well. of it apply to us. Most of it applies to us too. There are some that More volunteers that don't make sense. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Unless something changed, that let's see. Engaged in this is mostly wordsmithing. How much you get paid? Oh yeah, pots. Has everybody looked at the clean version, and do they have? No, I actually just looked at the marked up version and yeah. made notes. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Now, uh, in two, three boards and committees not created by bylaws or charters. So, uh, Dan, did you want to point out the the addition that we made? Ah, the enforcement part. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is a tough one. Okay. Uh, oh, reproach that one. Yep. Yeah. Which one? So if uh, four, two, three. Yeah. If we a select have board member's conduct is inconsistent with his code of conduct, the chair of the select board will discuss the conduct with the member. If the member continues with the conduct in question, the select board may reproach the board the member. That Which mean? is presumably, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. I mean, Critique we struggled. Was, we we struggled with in the Senate. Yeah, we struggled with this because we had enforcement for all the other volunteers, but nothing for us. Yeah. And how do you really? The same options are not open to. We can't vote each other off. Right. It's not a lot. Right. Only the voters do. So it. this is meant as a point of discussion. And so what do we do? Do we? Does somebody get a spanking? Yes, yeah, it would be flogging, we, we thought of public flogging in we the box, not on the common. But what we, is the, we the, what is all the all consequences? The, the reproach would be, you know, uh, you know, Vanessa, 
you've been doing this time and time again. Stop doing it. <laughs> we're upset with you. Uh, so uh, I mean, if you do it again, we're going to get really are we, upset. Are we talking yeah. about this here now? No. Or, or are we no, 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 no. I just no, wanted to. We're explain. almost there. I uh, wanted to explain the, the the reasoning behind this. Okay. Uh, Why don't okay. I get called out? You know? That's uh, fine. Just as an example. <laughs> okay. In terms of. Ray suggested uh, some slim downs to one here. I'm a little. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Talk a little bit about associate members. Uh, yeah, he didn't change any of the language. I thought he was going to pull some of that out, but it's still in. But it, it does no harm. So these are the uh, entities that are just created by the select board, and, and they're not. Correct, Andy, in the uh, the bylaws. Yeah, and they're not the standing. Right, uh, because that's, that's a town. That's a that's a that's a charter, but not charter. right term. Right, and I think that is, is that the town forest. So that's why we kept the town forest here. Yeah, right. We pulled some others out, but we kept the town forest in here. See, CAC is out. Um, oh wait, no, we rewrote it. Okay, I'm sorry. Trails is in. And uh, yeah, small changes to the track. Yeah. Um, big change to the CAC because it was very outdated. Yes. So we just went with their, um, what's the purpose, the mission statement on the website. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. And Town Forest, here's the, uh, there's a reference to the Twin World Charter, but there's other material we felt should be included here. Um, they suggested, Andy, that we take out any uh, references to where they fall in the town's organizational chart. The reason that's fine. Because that's really an admin decision by Bob and his and, people. And so you don't have to change and this. And it could change. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, Street Fair Committee is uh, defunct. Ad hoc committees, most of the ones that were in the old policy are gone. The only one that is really there anymore, is there at all, is the Human Rights, uh, right. the committee to establish the Human Rights Board to which you're making appointments tonight. So that is the sole survivor in that section. It actually wasn't there before. Right. So <laughs> every, everything went and we added. That's yeah, right. It was added. Sorry. Yeah. So, oh, that was yep. uh, just one comment on what happened to 2.5 and 2.6. After a lot of discussion we, in reading this, we realized this really doesn't apply to volunteer boards. This is volunteers that work at the senior center, work over wherever yeah. in the town hall. So Bob's suggestion was that 25 to 26, 26 is the UG Nigro Award, which is for those kinds of volunteers. Those should be pulled into the personnel policies, section six. So that's being recommended to staff to so do. So they get out of our right. Do so we they, they will do whatever with this and represent it to us I at some point. Do we give I mean I, do we still give those awards? I don't remember us doing it any public. Fourteen okay. years. Mm -hmm. right. now, now I'm going to turn this over to first to questions from the board. Yes. Are we starting on section so, one? Let's go back to one. Yeah. So, can I but make want to do, can we can we do it section by section? Yeah, and please limit to the questions, just so, questions. All right. So anything in the first discussion, in the first section? Um, I have lots. Yeah, I have. I have. I have no. So, yeah. I mean. So I, I, first, I want to start by thanking Dan and Andy for doing this. Um, this was clearly a massive amount of work. Um, you know, the section on the Basque alone was massive, and it's great. Um, I have sort of a few minor things, okay. some that are larger questions, some minor edits, um, suggested changes, etc. And I'm concerned that. It's 10.35, we have two other issues. We have to appoint the... We have oh, to yeah. appoint the... How ad busy ad is our schedule? We did anticipate this might need yeah, to be yeah, continued. Yeah, so, so one there, reason I there pushed is, you know, we can push it to our next meeting. Yeah. Actually, can I, can yeah. I make yes, a suggestion? Fair. So, I, I know you said you had a lot of notes. I have a lot of notes. Could it, would a process, good process be is that maybe we all send our stuff to Bob and then it all, so at our next meeting, there's a thing with all of our questions on it so that um, you could do that yeah we can all then get it ahead of time yes and think about it and then it'll yeah, make that discussion faster the yes get off. well we got two other yeah yeah I know. can we do this in a google doc no no not legally unfortunately yeah. even if we make it public no, no. 
Walls have to catch up to technology. I know. So, uh, well, at this point, um, let me just make the most sense to make a motion to continue the hearing. Yes. Uh, and I'll, I'll be happy to make that, and we'll continue it. Do we have a time certain at, at um, the 26th? We've already advertised an 8 o'clock and an 8.30 hearing for next meeting. Yeah, this should be later. Um, the first one is four or five PTTF suggestions you yeah, saw yeah, last yeah. time. Yeah. And then the other one is an RMLT telephone request that shouldn't pull to request shouldn't take long. Okay. So I would suggest you continue it to What's 9 o'clock. Well, I... This uh, I, I know you have that. I want to get that. That's going to take like ten minutes to talk about it. And that's not going to be a hearing, right? No, we're just talking about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it unrealistic to think about having a single agenda meeting next week on yeah. just this? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Me my book. I think I'm busy four nights. Yeah. Honestly, I'm busy eight. See why. Uh, I, and I'm not so, trying to create. So, I'm just. So yeah. I, I, I mean, I have like two things. Yeah. I know that Wednesday both day. of you have a lot Been to talk about. Yeah. 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 So and don't you two have oh, already yeah. talked about a lot. So, so Bob, as a point of clarification, do we, as we, okay, does there need to be a public hearing where we discuss it? or when we've implemented all of our changes. So where I'm going with this is it gives us a little bit more flexibility if we can have a casual conversation um, incorporate <coughs> the edits but not necessarily vote on them that night, but then have a public hearing where once we've reached agreement on everything, then yeah. we put it forward. Because right now it just seems like it's that's edits. That's kind of a chaotic way to do it, with all due respect. What my plan is to... Uh, yeah. You just keep continuing a public hearing until you're yeah. ready. Well, right. That's well, but we close the public hearing. The, we can continue. Well, on the idea no. here is... Oh, well, not, not on this. Here's, not on this. We continue yeah. it. Here's where I'm going with this. Uh, this marked up guideline will be the main motion when we close the hearing, and then amendments will be accepted. So think, think about, if you just have questions, great. If you want to make a change somewhere, that's the time to think about crafting it. Yeah. So you can look at this and figure out where do I want to do uh, a motion to... Uh, amendment. So I'm just looking that's at. That's how we'll do it. Yeah. And some of them may be friendly amendments. Right. Uh, some of mine move. may require Ray's input. And uh, you should run them by Ray then through Bob. Yeah. Okay. And 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 some of them are a few are interconnected because of time. You know, if you would choose mm -hmm. one like on the reorg, that's going to affect then the. Um, liaison appointments, et cetera, et cetera. That's right. One of That's correct. Yes. So yeah. that, that one we might want to take together. But I'm just looking at March 26th. We do have an executive session at 6. Yeah. Um, we have a, a presentation by That's Matt. Ready, so. Okay. Who? Nine. Matt Cronallis to replace the surplus bylaw with the select board policy. Yeah, that's probably not half an hour. It depends if you have a lot of questions, but that's that's time critical before town meeting. Okay. Yeah. And then we the, the, the rest of the PTTF. How about um, nine I think so. Should we do it at nine? Yeah. And we'll, yeah. This may take an hour, hour and a half, but we'll we'll get through it. Yeah. But it won't. It shouldn't take that long if we're able right. to get all of our stuff yeah. to Bob ahead yes. of time. Give it to Bob. If you if you do have questions that Ray should look at, please point that out. Yeah. I have those, but I also have some that are going to require board discussion because it's either adding of course. Amending. Well, you know what the motion is going to be. So if you want to put it in a motion form and then with a right. little sentence about what I mean, you're trying we, to get we at. can't dance around and look for consensus on every minor point here. We'll be here for two days. One of the things you need to be aware of is that hearing that you're going to have around all those parking places yes. yeah. will be full. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Oh. okay. You're, going to, you're going to have people here. You know, you're impacting, I mean, no, we're going probably to go less them. about Linden Street, but yeah. you're going to hear from a lot of people about what's going to be going on over Josh Wheat. That's, uh, well, I'm that, speculating. That, one's, that, that one's not on your agenda. It's not? No, you've already, we already did the that trial one. period. Which yeah, we did. Which hasn't started yeah. yet. We did that without a public hearing? Yep, because it's just yeah. a trial period. Okay, it's not all right. A yeah. change. What so do we have? On, what is in the public hearing? Yeah. Just uh, yeah, you reminded some us. Some more 30-minute spaces. Uh, the four hours and the two big municipal laws. Well, you'll get some play out of those. And the two spaces down by Tread. I'm just saying, that's not going to be like 
Domino. A two minute hit. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to make yeah, a motion. I don't think. So, to wait, be before we, Dan, the yeah. others, before we move All to right. motion, taking each of my and Barry's edits in a motion for each individual <coughs> one it is, doesn't seem practical to me, especially considering. Some of them, as Andy mentioned, he had apparently flagged the same one I did, that some of them are interconnected. Um, and some of them, you know, edits were made by the two of you, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the rest of us are in agreement with the That's language fine. used. Yeah. So tackling yeah. each of those as a motion seems excessive. Why don't you send them to Bob? We'll work something out that's equitable. Yeah. Uh, you, well, I, you all I, each I, have I, Word documents with the bold yes. and cross out. Yeah. yeah. And there's, as you can see, many colors of bold and yeah, cross I out. Can, yeah. I think it's most practical, if, if you don't mind, it's a little inconvenient, if you can use the note feature. Sure. And any time you have a comment, yeah, there's a motion or just a thought, whatever it is, question, um, if you put it as a note, that's really easy for me to find. Okay. Given that we're effectively presenting the, uh, the accepted change version, would it right. make sense for you yeah. guys to could mark that, that up? Yeah. You can mark that one yeah, up. I can send yeah. you the accepted changes. I sent They've you a PDF. Yeah. I could send you a Word document. I think you sent that. Yeah, I have that. I'm looking no, no, at you it. You have a PDF for accepting that. So, PDF. so I, I, I'd like yeah. to, we, we need to move this pack. along. Yeah. Um, Dan suggested yeah. uh, moving Word. this to 9, yeah. 9 p.m. at our next meeting. Yes. And w look, this is policy. We want to get it right. Right. Um, it's going to be policy for a while. Um, so let's put it for nine, and we're going to do the best we can. People are going to get comments. It'll be in the packet. We'll have time to So review. you'll be furnished before we vote with the uh, word copy you, of the accepted changes. It's going to be the motion. Yep. You mark it up, and then we'll have something to talk about. I'm, I, well, I'm not going to be marking it up so much as I think Whoever is going to be with it. comments. Yes. Right. If um, whoever has comments yeah. could really try their best to get them this week, yeah. I can get them to Ray, and Ray and I can have a back and forth. And I'll leave you two out with all due respect. Yes. Just to avoid yeah, yeah. all That's the meeting. Fine. I think right. I only have a few that have John, John has a question. Yes, John, one last thing. Can we, can we agree, and I realize we can't lock this into concrete, but in a general way among the five of us, yeah. can we agree that on the 26th, this is gonna, we're going to go till this gets done? I, yeah. While I love that idea, yeah, that, I do too. I don't think good decisions get made after a certain hour. Cool. Um, and let's face it, we get tired. Did, did, did we discard the idea of meeting next Tuesday? We have been processing these thoughts <laughs> right. for months. Yeah. All right, all right. But we haven't. This is the first time that any of us have seen. Stop, you're both right. All the Can we meet next week? <laughs> is that feasible? I can't. Um, um, stop, you're both yeah, right. Yeah, I, 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 I am not going to schedule a, an extra an extra meeting next week. We've had other times where I think yeah. I would have been much more inclined to schedule an additional meeting, and and, and, I, and I'm reluctant to do it on this. Mm -hmm. I think we. I, I think this is what. Um, well, what's the look? I I'm, I'm not okay. I think what's the feeling of the board on doing in an hour? Okay. If we get organized, get right. all the stuff. I, right. I am. <laughs> but we're gonna go. Hope springs eternal. All right. A bing, but a boom through it. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, okay. We, get organized. Get your stuff together. It shouldn't be that long. Um, I mean, it didn't take me long to write these notes, yeah, so right, it's not right. gonna take me long to. That's why. Yeah. Put okay. English to Let's you. do that. Yeah. Uh, or no, may, may I have the amount of work these guys did yeah. to get here. Yeah. What you have, whatever it is, is less. I guarantee it. I agree. It doesn't I mean you'll all agree on everything, right. but. And that's the point. That's yeah. The best yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. But we have a two-hour window. And we'll do the best we can. Um, it, uh, can someone make a motion? Move to uh, continue the hearing on, on Articles 1 and 2 to 9 p.m. on March 26th. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Okay, no. five zero. Um, over to Barry and Vanessa. Um, I'm just going to make a motion. We yeah. have our yep. Um, yep. That's all we need. Ad hoc yeah. meeting scheduled for uh, the 20th. You stay there. Yeah. Right. 23rd. Yep. Um, following Monday. Um, so motion. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Move to the board appoint the following nominees to the ad hoc committee on human rights with a term expiring on November 30th, 2019, when the committee will sunset. Deputy Chief David Clark, Lisa Egan, Josh Goldlust, Russ Graham, Lori Houghton, 
Sherelle Lestrade, Gina Beck McCormick, and Reverend Kyung Yu. Is there a second? second? Discussion. Was there any interview process for this, or how did you folks just volunteered? I mean, they're all well known. Right. I just wondered. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, the process was we talked about kind of. <coughs> well, first of all, it was kind of part of it was based on sort of what the what the you know um, right. filling oh, yeah. slots right. on that. Right. right. Um, we talked to lots of people. We sort of filled in kind of. Okay. So focus. you informally discussed it. With yeah, and they weren't a subcommittee, so they weren't a quorum. They were right. Okay. They and, and, the, quorum and the other the thing, end. too, was is that, you know, we, we talked to a lot more people than whose names are on this list. So, mm -hmm. you know. We yeah. had some people politely decline. Right. Yeah. And some people not so politely decline. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a diverse yeah. list. Yeah. And it, it, it kind of gets I would it. expect sort of, nothing less. The only thing, the only question I have on, on there is obviously you or I are on, the, uh, on there because we were voted so by mm -hmm. here. And also, uh, Linda Snow Doxer and Elaine Weber. There are other members committee. that are not listed. This is <coughs> are, are on the committee, but they were also, but they were voted by the school committee. And then there's the town manager or designee, the superintendent or right. designee. So there's, and then the library trustees have an appointment. Right. right. So these are just your appointments right. Correct. as a board. <coughs> yeah. Um, has a motion been made and yes. seconded? Yep. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? I'd like to thank Barry and Vanessa for getting this done. I think it's a, a great step forward, and, and I think you did a great job at okay. um, filling out the field. Right. Now, so um, next week's, or next week's, uh, the agenda, I, wanted, I want to give the board a chance to weigh in on agendas. I think that's just a good practice in general. Um, and I've been trying to do it. We often run out of time. Um, so as you can see, we have an executive session. You, you've all seen what's up here. Um, I hesitate to ask, but I have to ask, is there anything that one of you uh, would really like to see added to this agenda? There's, Bear. there's, there's one thing that I, I think would be a really nice thing to add to the agenda, and I don't necessarily think it may be an agenda item as maybe part of maybe my liaison report is okay. that um, I, I've been in contact with the principals of um, Weston and Sampson, uh -huh. the, the engineering firm that's going into yes. the Keurig build, basically taking over the entire Central. Keurig yes. building. Yes. Um, and they've offered to come and talk, you know, just to basically introduce themselves, say hello, and really talk about why they came to Reading. Yeah. And I think that that's a really great story yeah. for a lot of people to hear. It would be five minutes. And um, it would, I think, be a nice kind of, it doesn't have to be an agenda item as much as maybe part of my liaison, but I didn't want to just sort of just, I, I wanted to get the feedback yep. on the board on that. Yes. I hesitate yeah. to invite any private business to come speak before our board. Um, Why? In the, well, in, in that regard, we have new businesses that move in all the time. We don't recognize any of them. I recognize that this one's large. Um, and that's great that they're taking up that space, but do we, where do we draw the line as far as which businesses are allowed to, or encouraged or invited to come speak before us? Every small business that opens doesn't get that same courtesy. So, and, and is that a direction we want to go in? I'd like to invite them all, actually, but um, to start I think this is a great. Get our I mean, um, just it, it's not. It's nothing against no them. I, I, I think it's great that they're here. I just. Is that a good use? Dan, of Dan, Dan we need you. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. So, just to recap, Barry introduced the idea of inviting in the principals from Weston and Sampson because um, they're taking over a uh, entire building that's been. Okay. The Curry Building, um, and it would just be a five-minute presentation by Wes or discussion with Wes and Sampson. Vanessa's objections, if you don't mind me summarizing here, are that um, you know it, it, we're singling out one business and and it, you know not inviting in others. It sets a precedent. And this is a, we've never done anything yeah. like this. It makes me nervous, but what do you think? And John. I 
I don't know. It's a little. They're they're tenants, right? They don't own the building. Right? They don't own the building. No. All right. But yeah. they're investing a lot of money in. Them. They are. I'm not sure. It's, is Renning Cooperative moving out of there? No, they're just no. they're just moving they're in. Just the they're taking over the rest of the space. Okay, Renning Cooperative has what, a floor. What? I think they have a floor. Oh no, they have two or three floors. Mm -hmm. They're big. There. They're at least two. Mm -hmm. So. so yeah, they're yeah. bringing in 200. It, it makes me. Yeah, it's, it's a big move. I, I'm not, it, it, okay. I'm yeah, not making the move small. Yeah, I, I think um, I'd be a little uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, no, Dan, I do have, you have anything? I do. Like uh, let's put uh, appointments of the so uh, custodian of soldiers and sailors grave on there. That shouldn't take long. Excellent. I'm not sure if we can find some. Well, there is a candidate. Bill's been shopping around here. Uh, yes, but the uh, candidate doesn't appear when we ask. Does that have to be a VASC? We're thing? getting no feedback. We don't have a provision in there to waive a VASC interview to go straight to the board. I don't know. We can have that. Well, and do my, my actually, I asked yeah. Boston Bob about this. I said if, yeah. if this is a person that we can't get a hold of or to respond yeah, to know, our inquiries, then. If you're out there watching, please do contact yeah, yeah, us. Yeah. We, we'd love to appoint you. But, uh, but if we discussion. can't get a hold of them, do we want to appoint someone no, for you don't. however no. many your term no. and not have them be responsive? I'm saying just keep it as a placeholder in case we yes. get some of that. It could be a five minute interview. All right. And, and if they don't show. You know, folks, let's use as much of our. Our, let's try to reach as many people we, as we can on this to fill this vacancy. I'd like to do that for all the vacancies. And I'd like to reiterate what Bill said, which is that they have to be a veteran and they have to be a resident of Reading. Right. Yeah. So spread the word. Okay. You have the Reading, uh, the Reading Scholarship Foundation proclamation for the 26th. Yes, right? we do. Is that, I mean, was that on your? <coughs> okay. yeah. yeah. No, it's we have it. All right. All right. We make that the first the item of business, even though we haven't passed the policy yet. Yeah. Your meeting. Andy, yes. Um, so, just there's, there's an item in agenda uh, in italics. Um, yep. The board of health has still not heard back from town council as of yesterday. Uh huh. Today, uh, they next meet the night before your next meeting. So, if Kevin wanted to keep a placeholder on your agenda, I'd say it's tenuous at best. Yeah, yeah we're not going to have to. There's no, there's no room. Just not going to have. Well, that's part of where I'm going with this thing. I mean. There are a couple of things I'd like to talk about, but in deference to major issues yeah. that need to be settled, in my opinion, at the next meeting. I mean, we've got another report coming from, you know, subcommittee of Dan and Andy on the evaluation and goal setting process. Mm -hmm. That's coming, you know, next meeting. Um, I'm, I'm really hopeful that we can just take the Board of Health and just have to let them yeah. know that that can't stay I, I think as a placeholder there. The that's RMLD, I was having a sidebar with yeah. Bob, that might be postponable too. Well, they've got a half hour. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if they're mission critical because they got to get know. the thing up, then that's a different I story. Don't. My understanding is she was asked to do a presentation by her board um, in the first quarter. <coughs> this yeah. will satisfy that. I don't know of any other real time. Well, sensitive. when was that request made? I don't know. I, to me, no, last, I'm saying, to me when was the week. request made to get on our job uh, within the last week? Okay, so, so we wait for the last meeting of the quarter to jump on it. I, you know, I'm sorry, we've got other business here. I mean, and the I'm reason not, I don't want to not well, get that report, but well, and the reason I suggested it is because they are coming for a hearing, so it yep. just made sense. Yeah. But I don't think that it's urgent that she give. Well, her well if I'm willing to defer a couple we, of we, things, but that we, we're, yeah, we, we could talk. We, we could get. Then I, I think know. we we need Bob. We need to approve the um, their request, um, and, and I don't see any harm in delaying the. You can bounce a couple of those things if we if we happen to wrap the other business up before our mm -hmm. starting time of nine, which we can't start before. Then we can go back and do the town manager evaluation, which isn't it time fixed. That, that can be done anytime. Yes, that's true. For so we can we, fill we, in with that. Yeah, and Dan, Dan and I have a that meeting. That could be a start and stop. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, we have a couple of meetings, I think, before the next meeting. Yeah. So we're going to try to push. Um, and will, will you try to get what you kind of did with this to us ahead of time so we can look at it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It'll be in your packet. Bob, yeah. Dan's already done a, a lot of work on this. Okay. So, which I, and then, um, and I, I apologize, but because of, of this work, 
I, I cannot make the FinCon meeting tomorrow night, the, the capital plan. Well, I was planning on going. So. But, but it's posted. And, uh, oh, you know, I'm not going to be there. Yeah, I think it's important. At least if you two go yeah, and, so and give feedback from the board, that would be great. Can I ask why we don't have a meeting between the election and town meeting? That's I was wondering the same weeks. thing. Why is that? It's town manager's break. Yeah. Um, also, to certify the election could take a while. Yeah, last June, I thought the election was on the 9th. Something was published saying the 9th. Oh, so yeah, I, I then too. said, okay, a couple weeks after that, because you want to let the election be certified. Um, and then in October, November, December, somewhere, I found out it was the second. So meeting. Can we you, you are, one or? Well, you are meeting on the 11th, an executive session, and you can add an open session that night. You'll yeah. all be there, or any of you will be there. Yeah. I think there's. Is there one of us who can't come? No, I thought we're all there. That's okay. why we're doing it. You're all. Well, yeah. <laughs> this fellow. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. What's the day, what's the date for that exactly? Well, it's no. a Thursday, I think. The 11th. The 11th. The 11th. So that'll be after the election. Right. Yeah. Correct. The, the only issue with that would be is that if there's any kind of issue that Correct. prolongs the certification of the election. And where there were, you know, I mean, there's three seats and four candidates for the school committee, so they probably have a quorum, but. Yes, there is a slight chance. You don't want to schedule stuff too close to an election, we learned. Yeah. Not by bad way, but just But we can do it and then not do it. So you, you can plan on an open session uh, on the 11th, and it may or may not happen to okay. discuss whatever you need All right. to discuss. I've right. kind of made a mental note of that. Yeah. So you Fincom think the executive session will be 60 minutes? Uh, I think it has to be because I believe the school can be meets at 7 that night. Yeah. This is a 6 o'clock meeting. And it's upstairs above the Skatini Library, so well, don't worry if you want to come. Where will they meet if we, we decide to meet there in open session? Um, if you want to meet in open session after, yeah, I'd suggest the same room you're going to be in um, for the executive session. Can we, can they the trouble is, I don't know that our CTV is going to be able to cover it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we just boot the school committee out of their spot? Knock yourself out, you ask. Yeah, so why can't, I'm why kidding, can't we do I'm the kidding executive that's a session joke. here? Uh, there's a lot of people coming. It's 35 people invited. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So four boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Right. The, the other thing is that, that it is in the, either the bylaws or the, or the charter that we're to publish uh, a meeting schedule six months in advance. And, um, yeah. Right. you know, I, 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 there have been times when I've wanted to, you know, vary from that six months course. And um, I have been spoken to by, by a couple of you and uh, about changing these things, and I haven't. So, um, I mean, I think part of it, though, is that we're also behind because we had a snow day. So, yes. Yeah. You know, we're, and the, these policies, which I think are going to be time consuming, aren't normal things on our agenda. Yeah. So but but our policy says we can call a meeting when we, the chair can call a meeting. Yes, we yes, can. yes, we can. Well, what, let me ask the board. We, we can, via email, coordinate a meeting, sure. an extra meeting. Yes, Bob? Well, if you're going to discuss any of these hearings, you can't add that at any date but the 26th. You just continue to the 26th. The other two are advertised for the 26th. Yeah. Okay, you're so right. you Good want point. to re-take up this motion and continue to a different day, you we, better we do that We could reconsider tonight. it. And the other two have already been published. You can't change those. But we could do other business on the 11th. That's not either a hearing or. But but there's the not there's the there's the not much else. We have whittled it down. Um, I mean, right now we have executive session. A very brief thing by Matt. I assume half yeah. an hour or 15 minutes, 20 minutes. 15 minutes. So and on the 26th, though, we can choose to continue it to the 11th. If. You could choose to continue any of the three hearings to the if 11th. If we have any yeah. <coughs> Which ones are we talking about? I'm sorry. It's now 11 There's PCTF, right. there's RMLD request for a new poll. Okay. And, and then, then and they're not hearings. And yes, they, yes, yes, they are. They are. They and, then, and then there's a hearing. Poll hearing is 10 minutes. Yeah, that's a short yeah, one. Yeah. The poll. And, then, and then there's the parking one. Um, and then there's the, this one that we Can postponed. I John. Yeah, John. With, with all due respect, I mean, the, the, the burning question for me is yeah. how mission critical from a timing standpoint is the new telephone poll? Does it have to be done? I mean, 
I mean, I if it has to be done, it's already, okay. It's already Just been don't published. tell me. Yeah. Or posted. I don't think that's I, the, the two other hearings there aren't optional. Right. Which, so the PTT. The PTT. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And you get that. And the new poll. The poll. They've, they've already been advertised. Exactly. We, we but, gotta, but you can open a hearing and continue it right away, but you want to tell people in advance. Uh, yeah, you have to I, hold I'm not it trying to just, you know, right. give them a bad time. I mean, right. I, just I trying to get the work done. Yeah, I'm, 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 if they want a new that. poll to go in, that can't be a long discussion. No. I'd just like to take Never care is. of it. And, 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 um, and the PTTF we need to do as well. Um, is it fine for us to, you know, um, ask the RMLD general manager to, you know, come see us in. We're April. already. I don't see why that would be a consider that problem. Done. No, okay. I think that's fine. Um, if that happens, look, we have a we have a fighting chance to yeah. get Finish going by you know eight eight forty five. You know. I mean, that's a ten minute item. We're booting. Uh, yeah, everything's a 10 minute item that we boot, but you know what happens. They're never 10 minute items. But I think, yeah, I think uh, the RMLD one's sort of low hanging fruit. Yeah, and, and uh, can, the I, can I suggest that we just leave it as minutes, is so. and on the yeah. 26th evaluate how we're doing and see if we want to open it up on the 11th? Well, that's yeah. not fair to um, yeah, the general uh, manager of RMLD. I mean, yeah, either uh, she's on or she's off. Yeah, I, I, the other thing Bob has impressed upon me is yeah, that we need to respect this people's time. employees schedules and if they're scheduled if they're if they plan to be at a, a, in the here in the evening at 8:45 mm -hmm. um, on that date I'm reluctant to say uh, well you can come on some some other later date at a, and mm -hmm. you can take some other evening um, and come here honestly and if and you tell it's her a, tomorrow, it's a 10 minute weeks notice it's, but it, uh, he's making a valid point yeah, I, I, I'm I reluctant. I'm very reluctant to do that. Plus, it's 10 minutes. Yes, uh, we'll her see. report will be 30 minutes. She asked for 30 minutes. There the you whole go. Hearing will be shorter. It just grew from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, and we haven't even started it yet. It took us no, 30 minutes. It is 30 minutes. <laughs> um, let me just ask the board. Yeah, Bob. Um, the wild card on this, to me, is the PTTF yeah. stuff. Yeah, it could be 30 minutes. It how, could be how two. How controversial are the approvals? Is there any difficulty? You advertise a hearing. You can open the hearing. We can let everyone know there's not going to be anything that night, and continue it to another meeting. The PTTF. Yes. You know what? There's in no the legal problem with that. No, but the thing is, though, is that if there are people in here, means that we, we have not advertised the hearing to any public yet. We oh. haven't told them. It's oh, been in okay. the newspaper, oh. but we haven't actually invited okay. people and sent out code reds and all that. So. I just want to get something done. <laughs> you know, we do I, too. I also don't want to rush through the policies, which I feel no. is like, what's going so we're, to happen? We're going to try to, try to carve this thing back. We will create enough time that evening where we will not be rushing. I promise. If we get our stuff in advance, yeah. I just, it, it'll be a lot I, shorter. I'm, I'm sort of letting everyone know I have items that are going to open up discussion, and I don't That's want right. to be forced to vote on it. No. Because That's simply we want to check a box. I, I, I agree with the no check in boxes. Yeah, I, I agree, agree yeah. with that. Um, Vanessa or uh, Dan or, or Bob, could one of you reach out to the general manager of yeah, I will. RMLD and see if it's possible for her to shorten her presentation? Can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Just in the event we are able to move some of this stuff around, I'm going to make a motion to reconsider our. Uh, yeah. To 8 your p.m. Your continuation. Our continuation date. Sure. Okay, this so way, if you have time, we can yeah. don't have to wait till uh, night. So I move to re. I think it takes a two-thirds vote. Move yeah. to reconsider the vote to continue the 26th at 9 p.m. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? No. Okay. I thought we already did that. No. no. Okay. Eight eight. He's not. Eight. He's. he's so this is. This vacates the motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Oh, okay. We're gonna. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to move to continue the hearing on Articles 1 and 2 to 8 p.m. Second. On the 26th. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? There we go. Okay. That does create a lot we of flexibility. We just busted open in uh, two and a half hours. I'll check okay. with uh, Colleen O'Brien. Yep. Okay. I do not want to disinvite her. But we have the flexibility. Well, I'm the now. one that created this agenda item because RMLT was already going to be here. So I said, would this be convenient? She didn't say, I must come this night. Okay. So, so in the event, I, and I agree with what you said. Yeah. 
respect. public hearing is separate from her from presentation. Her yeah, but she'd be at both. Yeah, it was a convenience. Yes, but I know she tries to do the present. She has numerous presentations yeah. that she does for the various towns. Right. So right. pushing that might make her schedule challenging. Yeah. Uh, with all due respect, this is something that her board asked her to do before the end of the first quarter, and we got a request for one meeting time right, left. We're gonna, we're gonna, that's pretty disrespectful we're gonna work, to us. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we'll work it out. Yeah, I, I think that it's time. That this is a job for the liaisons too. We want to have good relations. Is there a motion? Okay, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Mm, <laughs> any second? Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? All right. <laughs> <laughs>